Welcome to Mesa, Arizona. We are starting off and kicking off season three of Major League Pickleball here at Legacy Sports. Dominic Catalano alongside me, Chad Edwards. Chad, good to see you. How's the weather today? It's been, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. Um, my toes are already numb. Here we go, guys. To start the day. I've got 17 layers of clothing on. It is a balmy 38 degrees. Yeah, so. we so let's let's talk a little bit about what we got going on today, Chad. It is all about the Challenger League. So first, let's talk about the differences. We have the Premier League and the Challenger League. Chad, break down what's the difference between the Premier and the Challenger. So you know, obviously with with the Challenger here, these guys are are coming out and competing, but they're also trying to really prove themselves and get into that Premier League. Yo, know, it's. They're in, they're in a bit of a tough situation. Right. You know, uh, we're going to have some players in this that, that not a lot of viewers have seen play before. You know, obviously, they're all pros. They're playing on the tours and everything. But this is, go this is giving them uh, the opportunity to step into the spotlight, really show off what they have, uh, and kind of prove to these team owners that they deserve a shot up in the Premier League. You know, obviously, with the Premier League, we've got all of, all of our big names, analytics. Ben Johns. Yep. Um, yo, so it, it, it's going to be fun. Yeah, and, and we can talk about that a little bit too. Is that in the Challenger League, which we're going to see all day today? So today is all about the Challenger League. The Premier League doesn't start until tomorrow. So today, the Challenger League. You talk about them having to prove themselves, and and, and they're kind of out to prove all the owners here, right? All 24 owners that they deserve to be in that Premier League. So you're going to see a lot of players out there with a little chip on their shoulder. And let's break down. Let's say some some sleepers that we have. Okay, so I have a couple sleepers that uh, um, I want to talk about first. First on the female side. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my first sleeper, not sleeper, but someone who may have a chip on their shoulder, Lee Whitwell. <laughs> right. <laughs> Lee has played in Lee's both. Been in all the MLPs. All the MLPs. She's won two MVPs. Yet now she is in the Challenger League. So she's taking that almost as like a almost a little slap in the face, going, "Hey, I deserve to be there. I'm going to prove you wrong." And so that's one on my side with the female. On the other side, on the male side of things, I look at a Ryler DeHart. Ryler yep. has really proved himself over the last six to eight months. Proved that he's not only a singles player, but is a very good doubles player, and he's really learned the men's side of doubles and the mixed side of doubles because it's two types of doubles to play and he's really learning that so you're going to see Lee Whitwell, and she's playing today, all day today. And then you have Ryler DeHart with the Chicago Slice. Those are my two that I'm going to say really have something that they really want to prove today. Who are your two, Chad? So, you know, I'll start off with the guys. And, and I think kind of with the guys, you've got a few names in this, in this Challenger League that um, might have been a shock to some people that they didn't end up on the Premier teams. I would mm -hmm. say I'm going to go with two with this one. I'm going to go okay. with Callan Dawson. Yes. And I'm going to go with Pat Smith. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Those are those are two guys that have been on the on the tours for a long time. That proved um, their their competitive side and 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 how well they can compete. Um, I think this is kind of the situation for them that where they're really trying to trying to chomp at the bit to, to get back into that Premier League. Those are two great picks right there. I love that. And I would say, you know, and Hunter Johnson's another one as yeah. well. Like, there's so many guys Chad, in, I asked in for this one, one, you gave me two. I know, I'm, looking at my, I'm looking at my list, let's, and I'm like, let's, 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 yeah, we can, West Gabriel, it's, it's you know, top uh, West, heavy. West Burrows. It's top heavy on the guy Pablo side, right? Pablo Tejas. Yeah. You know, I could, we could, Rob Nunnery, so, we could just keep on going through. So, so you, you said you, one, you, I've done now you, ten. You named half the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now on the female uh, on the side. On the female side, yo, I th I'm going to go with Brooke Buckner. Ooh, okay. All right. Okay, so she's still trying to find her footing in pickleball. Yo, she's coming up. She's making a splash a little bit. A name that nobody has really, really no. seen yet. But... The tennis background that she's bringing into into the pickleball game, I think, yo, know, in a couple more months when she starts really figuring it out, and and obviously this is a different format too with mm -hmm. MLP and the rally scoring. 
it's a different play style here compared to a regular tournament. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm going with Brooke as, as she is probably going to be somebody that's going to excel at this, at this format. Now, now, now that you throw Brooke at me, right? I'm gonna name another guy. Okay. <laughs> now I'm gonna go right. Because who is Brooke playing a lot of mixed doubles with this year on the PPA tour? Is Steve Deacon. Yes. Right. He's and back. so Steve Deacon Steve is, back. is back. He's coming off a year-long wrist injury, but he is back and he is looking good right now. Um, but it's a small sample size. The game has changed in a year, right? And so it was always a question when Deacon was coming back: is is he going to be able to catch up to that? Well, I think he's proved that right away in Orlando. I went up there. I saw him play at the PPA Orlando. He looked really good, and he was partnered with Brooke Buckner. So now, what have we done, Chad? We've <laughs> named all of right. We 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 busted this out, and we were saying uh, people we want are sleepers. We pretty much named the whole Texas Ranchers team, right? Yeah, pretty much because they're all veterans, yeah. right? And so speaking with them, I've been speaking with them over. The, I got here yesterday. Was talking to a lot of the teams. Speaking with the Texas Ranchers yesterday, and that is Lee Whitwell. Jeannie Arankina, uh, Pat Smith, and Steve Deacon, a combined age. Now, this is nothing personal, but they were the one who told me this. They have a combined age of 169 on that team, all right? But the combined age of Lee Whitwell and Steve Deacon, who are playing together, from what I heard, is 98. That's a lot of experience, right? Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Hey, they're the ones who told me, so they, it was free reign. But you have a lot of experience on that team. So coming out of that pool that they're in, which is the pool we're going to start with here today, that is the Utah team, the D.C. team. It's the Texas Ranchers and the Chicago Slice. I'm looking at that Texas team as they've been here. They've yes. done that. Lee Whitwell's two-time MVP here at MLP. So they're going to be a team to watch out of that pool. Now, Chad, let's break down a little bit about the match we have up here on Grandstand Court to start off. It is the D.C. Pickleball Club taking on the Utah Black Diamonds. What is your prediction here for this matchup early? You know what? I, I think this is going to be somewhat of a, a tough test uh, for D.C. Um, you know, with with Utah, you've got some you've got some veteran players in here with with Michelle Esquivel, Rob Cassidy, Olivia McMillan, and 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 Spencer and Spencer, yeah, Spencer Smith. Sorry, drawing a blank. Not much sleep. Um, Ninety six players. We got to remember. It's fine. <laughs> but yes, no, you're but, right. And and the other thing is too, you've got Michelle, Rob, and Olivia that all have experience with this MLP format. Correct. Yo. Whereas for DC, uh, with with Shelby Bates, uh, Monica Pellicello, I think Sam Query is he's got a huge upside, and he may be one of those sleepers, but he's yet to like really prove himself on the pickleball court. Uh, and then Stefan Avon. Stefan has that uh, a little bit of MLP uh, experience as well, and he's a big explosive lefty. But I just I don't know if if DC really has a mesh like the Utah Black Diamonds do. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, and I agree, too, with your uh, kind of X factor here in this matchup. It's the Sam Query factor, right? He's been very vocal about him and about himself and this team and becoming, you know, being the first draft pick of Challenger. He was the number overall draft pick in the Challenger. Kind of a shock uh, to most players as he does not have the track record yet, um, but he's out there. He's working hard. I know he works a lot with West Burroughs over there in California. He's training with West Burroughs a lot, um, so that's a great hitting partner to have. But now, does he have what it takes to make it here on this level right now. We're going to see it quickly this weekend. Heck, quickly today. They got three <laughs> matches. They're going to yeah. know if they're moving on to Saturday after today. That's their tough challenge coming in is the lack of experience. And like you said, experience does matter here. Uh, different kind of scoring format. I think that Esquivel, Cassidy, Palicelli, and Smith have the advantage coming in early. But it looks like we are almost set to go here on grandstand court. You have Shelby Bates and Monica Pelicelli finishing up their warm-ups here on court. It will be, like always, it'll be 
women's doubles to kick us off, followed by men's doubles, and then two mixed doubles matches. Even if it is a 3-0 lead for a team, we do play that fourth mixed doubles match because points do matter here for tiebreakers and differential in the scorebook. So we will get four matches guaranteed. And then the ever so great dream breaker if we do get to that we all do love a fan good dream favorite. breaker it is the fan favorite we love it um so we'll see if we eventually do get to that today we always look forward to those those are a lot of fun but again chet how important and, and we've talked about it before you and i've been on mlp call for a while now um but how important is it to all those fans watching right now is the first match with the women to get things started yeah and that's i was as you were leading into that i think this, this, the women's doubles matchup is the most important match of the four that, that is played mm -hmm. with, you know, in respect to what the score is going later in the mixed doubles. But if the women can get out and really put your team ahead with that one, it takes a lot of the pressure off. The guys yeah. can now come out and play a little bit looser. Typically when they play looser, there's, you know, then they start getting on those runs. So it just leads that momentum into it. You lose that first one, now it's kind of an uphill battle. The men have to come out, really put the pressure on, try to draw it back 1-1, one, one, and then you're going in and trying to at least split in mix to get that that uh, to that dream breaker. So. Yeah, and, and it, it, how I kind of look at it is it's like if you're playing a match, right, say you're playing a game to 15 and you jump up and it's like 8-1 on the end change, you're sitting pretty. You may change your game plan a little bit, get a little more aggressive, put a little more pressure, and I think that's what happens when, say, the women win that first match, right? And now your guys come in and go, hey, we're going to play a little loose. We're going to put a little more pressure on. We have that one game in our pocket to, to our advantage. Yeah, I mean, they can come out and they can take some take some chances. Um, and, you know, with the – we've already spoken about it a little bit. With this MLP format and the rally scoring, every point – count so if you're coming in and and you're trying to uh push that push the factor and 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 really grind it out and you start spraying some balls now all of a sudden you're getting behind in this format mm -hmm. and it's even more pressure and even more of an uphill battle so and for those of you guys at home been kind of unfamiliar with mlp Great format, uh, rally scoring. So it's rally scoring throughout. Um, a lot of naysayers didn't like that at first, but Ched, it's uh, always kind of used the term. It's like Novocaine, give it a little time and it does work. <laughs> and everybody that has, has come out to see MLP, they notice and they see the electricity behind the rally scoring. I was one of those guys. I was like, ah, rally scoring, I don't know this and that. You come to an event like this, if you're in the area right now, get your butt over here. You want to see some of the best pickleball and some fun pickleball with this rally scoring it's so interesting because you mentioned it earlier chad every point counts you cannot take a point off if you're on the serve oh we don't get that point well it's just a side out nothing hurt you're hurt every time you give <laughs> up a point here in the rally scoring yeah and and part of that as well with with this rally scoring is the players remain on their side so the, the, the serve is, is switching back and forth be, between the players, but they're only going to switch um, either during a timeout or an end change. So, <coughs> excuse me. So with that, um, it, it comes into a whole lot of strategy. Yep. You know, we're, we, don't, we're not, we don't have to see the stacking and all that movement anymore. Um, they're coming in. You've got your left side player, your right side player, and that goes into, those, uh, into the draft picks as well as far as who's a really strong left side player, who's yep. a really strong right side player. Well, you could take somebody uh, on the Premier League side with, with Vivian David, probably the, the, the strongest right side female um, in the game. You get her, and now you're looking for, all you're thinking about is, is left side players, where you're not looking for that, that, that right side player anymore. Yep. Well, it looks like we are just about set. Referees had their meetings with the players. And we are just about ready to get underway here on Grandstand Court. Yeah, and Dominic Catalano alongside me, Chad Edwards. Chad and I are on the call here on Grandstand Court pretty much for the whole first three days. Um, we got our, our seats, our thrones here. We're ready to go sit. You and I will head over to Championship Court, do a couple matches throughout these three days. So we'll be up in uh, 
bird's eye view on championship court. But again, this is another part, Chad, that, you know, as commentators, we feel blessed to be here because, again, you're getting there, – there's matches on six courts going on this morning right now. Yep. There's not a bad match going on. No, not at you all, especially pick, especially in this format. Pick, pick a spot, pick a match, and it's going to be absolutely incredible. So we love just being on court, being able to bring you guys – this call here this morning. Again, it's bright and early here, about 8.20 here local time. So have you completely looked through the list of owners? Yes. I, I, I was I've, I've blown away it. by the sheer number of owners that we have for MLP now. It's, it's, uh, it's unbelievable, isn't it? So you know, we'll take the, the, the DC pickleball team, for example. Right. Okay, so you've got... Do the two we got here. We've got, One's we've, easy. We've, we've, we've got Odell Beckham Jr. Right. Ava Longora, Justin Verlander, Mashut Ozil, Kate Upton, Al Tyler, Sam Porter, Sean Marion, and Rip Hamilton. I mean, it's a pretty extensive and formidable uh, background there yeah. of, of team owners. Right. And you got celebrities, athletes. <laughs> and you got everything. <laughs> Absolutely everything. And then for the Utah Black Diamonds, we've got the Pardo family. Uh, and, and obviously, you know, founders, founders of the, the PPA and very involved in the world of professional pickleball now. So, you know, they're... Uh, they're responsible for uh, for adding to the to the growth of it and then obviously with with our MLP extraordinaires of, of Steve Kuhn and, and Brooks Wiley the list of owners is extensive and the resumes are extremely extremely impressive as Chad mentioned earlier, it is chilly out this morning. It was 37 when we got here. Seems to be warming up just a little bit. By about 10 o'clock, I was out here yesterday real early, same kind of temperature. And by about 10, 10, 30, it actually gets a lot warmer. And it does feel a lot warmer once about 10, 10, 30 hits. So, again, not too bad out here. Early it was a little chilly. Chad and I were both in the players' lounge getting our coffee. Um, and staying in there as long as we could. <laughs> but I, I feel like I complain about weather no matter where I am. You do. Because it was 89 degrees yesterday in Naples. I was like, man, it is so hot. I'm sweating. This is disgusting. And you, do now, you do complain And now I'm here. I'm like, my God, it's so cold. I, almost, I need to I find that 75 degree I almost spend more time with around. you than you do with Simone, so I do <laughs> notice you complain a lot. But yes. <laughs> But yeah, so Chad and I do spend a lot of time <laughs> in the booth <laughs> here at the APP and the MLP. Like but we are just about set to get Cohen Ron Ponder on the call for us. One of our MLP referees here for us today. It'll be Olivia McMillan and Michelle Esquivel on the far end for the Black Diamonds, taking on Shelby Bates, Monica Palicelli on the near end for the DC Pickleball Club. And we are underway. The 2023 MLP's P season is underway. I like the aggression there from Esquivel stay, stepping up, taking that ball early. These balls are going to fly with how cold the weather is. Bates just a little late on that ball through the middle. She set it up well and pushed Esquivel out wide, but wasn't expecting it to come that high. We see there another ball go a little deep, potentially with how hard these balls are. Like we said, you know, the colder the ball, the colder the temperature, the harder the ball is. A little long right there on the forehand from Bates, and it is a 3-1 lead here early for the Black Diamonds. And nice ball there from Bates, getting on top of that, right at the feet of Esquivel at the baseline. <laughs> Nice 
Nice one-two combo there from Bates. Yeah, good roll on that third shot drop, stepping up and taking that ball early and out in front. Really put the pressure on. Nice one. So I like what McMillan did there. She kind of took a couple of steps back from the kitchen line, giving herself a little bit more reaction time to be able to counter attack and, and really be aggressive on those balls. That's what I'm expecting from Esquivel, especially with it being a little chilly and the ball being a little harder. I'm expecting her to pull the trigger a little more. She is she is one of the more aggressive players on the female side. A good so, setup there. Yeah, it's a good move by Bates, but she just wasn't quite ready or anticipating that ball coming back at the pace it was. The, the shot of that rally right there was the get by Paleocelli. Yes. Wow, yeah. what yeah. a right. point. Uh, Esquivel straight in the body. Somehow she gets a paddle on it, slaps it back, and still keeps it down in the kitchen. Ah, same woman, right? Like, So what I mean by that is that I would have liked to see Paleocelli just drop that in and get into the point. Ball was so low, tough to attack. Scores eight five. I can't change. I don't know why it does six five. Little unlucky with that ball not creeping up over the net there for McMillan. Yeah, excuse me, six six. Yeah, don't worry, I'm on top of it, mate. You, Thank you. You Thank just you just look good. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Good ball from Esquivel. Hard cross court forehand dink. Yeah, I like the setup there from Esquivel. She goes straight ahead at Paleocelli twice, sets up like she's going to drive again, and then goes behind Bates. Good combination. In. Oh wow, nice hands. Oh, that was ambitious. Yes. I would have liked to see it just walk away back into the point there. I, I, I get, you know, trying to make that attempt, but those balls just aren't carrying enough right now to really be aggressive with your poach. Nice ball right there. So call was out by Esquivel and McMillan. So Ooh, our first challenge of the 2023 MLP season. Early DC is going to challenge the out call. So At the we'll far baseline. We'll check and see here on screen as our video review referee, Michelle Baumgartner, is going to come over and check that out and see 
if that ball was in or out. Tough for us to see, Chad. We're on the far side here, or far end. So it's on the opposite side of us. I can't even see the baseline in front of me, let alone that side. That's very true. We're blocked by a fence, so we're on our feet most of the day checking this out. But again, a good start here for the Black Diamonds. I think we expected that. Um, but my my thing is for the DC team, this is where the tone is gonna have to be set for them in every match with the women. With Shelby Bates and Monica Palacelli, they're gonna need to really step up to set to set their men up. That ball was right on, on the line. The line. Yeah, so call overturned, looks like. It'll be a Good challenge here for DC. So ball was in on the line, so a good challenge here. So it looks like it, I believe it's seven, nine. So big swing there was going to be 10-6, but now it is 7-9 with Bates serving. We'll change ends here at 11. Good pull there from McMillan. You'll see that a lot. McMillan likes to play aggressive. That's a nice pull, and Michelle Ascaval has that in her bag, and that's one reason I like her on the left side. Well, especially with the, that two-handed backhand. She can hold it just like she did right there, and she has the option to either roll it hard cross-court, and she would have pulled Bates out wide, so Bates can't fully commit to the middle there. She can quick flick up into the body of Paleocelli, or she can take that ball through the middle. And she throws Paleocelli and Bates in their position with that one there. So that two-handed backhand has really, we're, we're starting to see it more in the men's side as well. I think that's, that's along with the power that's now being infused into the game, I think that is, that is one of the biggest things that we're seeing more and more uh, players are, are adept at using that two-hand backhand uh, now with, with pickleball. It's the advancement of the game, Chad, and that's what you're seeing. You're seeing so many, you know, we've seen over the years, you and I have been in pickleball a long time and seen the change over the years of the game and how the pace of the game has picked up. And for people out there going, uh, it, it's not in the spirit of pickleball. Well, the people who are saying that are the people who are losing to the players who are hitting the I ball tell hard you what, now. If you, you tried to adjust. If you tried to hit that shot that Esquivel just hit with a paddle back in 2015, yeah, that's not getting over the net. Oh, nice angle from Bates. I'm, I am not 100% set that she met to hit with that, that angle. much angle. She'll tell you she. Did. I will give her the benefit of the doubt, but I'm pretty sure there was edge guard involved in that one. Good aggression there from Esquivel and good change of spots. Yeah, nice ball right there. And again, the ball still being hard because it's cooler. That ball just gained so much speed on the overhead from Bates. Well, and these balls are sliding on the court right now too. They're not really gripping a whole lot. Paley Telly, just a little off balance when she's trying to hit that third shot drop. So her body moved to the right. Bates going for a little too much angle. The movement of McMillan is what forced that one. She does move very well on the court. up a little bit right there. Yeah, and I think Pagliacelli hit, hit an out ball in the middle of that exchange as well. Yeah. 
And a ball in the middle right there, and it looks like we may have a timeout here from DC. And we are going to get that timeout here from DC. For those of you guys at home, make sure you check out MajorLeaguePickleball.net. Go on there and check out all the matches we have going on today. Go to the website, click on MLP Mesa, and you can click and watch all matches. All right, all the courts. You want to check out? Courts? You got six courts right now. You want to check out? Chad and I, you want to check out Cameron and Adam, or you want to check out some just some matches. All right, but we're streaming with commentary two, two courts. The other four are live, though. So you want to check out your other teams out there playing this morning at 8 a.m. They are all there for you. So go to majorleaguepickleball.net and click on the banner on top where it says watch all matches. It says MLP Mesa streaming matches live now, and we are live on all courts. We're back from our timeout. A 16-9 lead here for the Black Diamonds. And Pale Chelly didn't get enough on that right no, there. No, she's, she's got to do more with that ball. The panel had kind of dropped under a little too much and she flicked it up. That's more of a, a stroke that you're going to take when that ball's kind of knee height, not above the waist. And a nice ball, one-two combo from base where she sped up at McMillan first and then dropped to Esquivel. I like that, but they have some work to do here. Down by seven. leave right there but I, I don't mind the aggressiveness from McMillan there up by seven I, I like that as well but I also think for Bates and Paleocelli is let a few more balls go because it is harder to keep that ball in the court right now decision in the middle of that point was Bates was leaning to get a ball that was going to drop too far in. She let it bounce and just continued to keep that pressure on. Nice little run here from DC. Unforced there from McMillan anticipating possibly a black diamond timeout here. No, they're going to run with it as the DC pickleball team back within four. On it. She read it well, but again, she's been handcuffed a few times by Esquivel. on championship court, but it is a 19-13 lead here for the Black Diamonds. Two points away from ending this first and ever so important women's doubles matchup. She wanted it. Yeah. But again, we, we saw her miss another speed up a few points ago. Feet moving a little too much when she goes to hit that. A little bit off balance. Oh. Indecision there. Yeah, Bates got her feet crossed up on that one. So, these, uh, sorry, Utah Black Diamonds now at a freeze. We're going to go back to traditional scoring. But except for DC, DC, DC stays on rally scoring until they get to 18. 
So Escavel and McMillan and the Black Diamonds are frozen on 20. They can only score on their serve. And DC can do some damage here and catch up because they are still on rally scoring. Yeah, I like to see Palocelli attack that, and she doesn't. But we've seen indecision from both Palocelli and Bates in the last four points. And I think that comes back to the errors early on. That ball will go long, and it is a 1-0 lead here for the Utah Black Diamonds as they take game number one, 21-15 over the DC Pickleball Club. So Escaval and McMillan do their job and get that victory. Chad, what was the difference maker here for Escaval and McMillan and the Black Diamonds? Well, I think they were the more aggressive team, but they were also the more consistent team. We saw only a couple of unforced errors uh, in their game, but I, I really think that the big difference between this wasn't as well as how Utah played, but more the number of errors that DC made that really changed it for uh, the Utah Black Diamonds. All right, so we are here. Men will step on court and they will begin their warm up. We will take a quick break. We'll be back right here on Grandstand Court with men's doubles coming up. Don't go anywhere. Okay. Can we slide the ball? Yeah. 
Back here on Grandstand Court, it is all about men's doubles here. DC taking on the Black Diamonds. Yes, Sam Query, Stefan Auburn taking on Rob Cassidy and Spencer Smith. I'm liking the Black Diamonds long sleeve with Spencer Smith. Haven't seen that one. I'm all about the good looks, all, Chad. All, all about the I'm Black uh, Diamonds on the Black Diamonds t-shirt. I, I know. I like it. Looks good. <laughs> I had to talk to Connor Pardo over there. Give me one of them Black Diamond shirts. But uh, Well, you know, if you're a better player than you are a commentator, you would have been out there playing. Just uh, saying. <laughs> Man. Just when I have some confidence, <laughs> just when I have some confidence, and Chad there to shoot me down oh. like, a, like a brother would. Man, I played last week. I couldn't walk for four days. <laughs> so I'm, I'm fine behind the microphone. We're underway. Lefty to lefty. Cassidy to Auburn, and Cassidy thinks he's serving again and, and forgot the rules there for a second. He was happy. A rally scoring. Players will stay on side. And two lefties and two righties here on court. So middle seems to be closed here. Left side, right side, all taken care of. So a little bit of a feeling out process right here in the last few points. Trying to get used to that harder ball. Drops aren't working, drives aren't working. <laughs> 2-2 two, two here early. Yeah, nice ball right there by Spencer Smith. And that chap, that's the feeling out by Query, right? As Auburn was sliding to the sideline, Query stayed on his side. Yeah. He's got to pinch that middle. Good hands Cassidy from Corey is, Cassidy is one of those guys that'll get every ball back. Maybe unorthodox sometimes, but really hard to put a ball away against him, and it kind of took Query up. A good lead right there from Auburn as that ball sails long. Again, it's that harder ball this morning. Ball's going to sail. 34. Bodies up, Auburn right there. That was more, I mean, Cassidy's movement off balance, speeding it up. Yeah. Good drop there from Smith. Avern trying to pick that up and not able to get it over the net. Cassidy's the guy that we're going to see slide on the court at some point in the next three days. A nice inside out there from Spencer Smith as he comes up charging. Good movement there from Query, kind of jump in the corner of the kitchen, or split in the corner of the kitchen, put a little pressure on Cassidy. Hands from Query. Oh, he's turning that offense into the defense into offense. Does a good job. That ball slips past Auburn, though. That's tough, and you'll see Cassidy do that ball up. He will not retreat. He'll just get low. Body up. Body up and try to block it. A little awkward hit there from Spencer Smith as he kind of tucked underneath that with the forehand. Ball sails long. DC back within two. Little help from the net there for Query and through the timing of Spencer Smith off. Oh, all tied here at eight, making this interesting is DC now. Eight, eight. 
ball kind of just rolled along Auvergne's paddle there. Trying to add a little too much spin on that drop. Good use of his height there from Query with the half Ernie. Doesn't even have to jump, just takes yeah. a step over the corner. We're going to have a challenge here. Cassidy thought that Query's foot was on the line when he hit that Ernie. So we'll see here as again Michelle Bumgardner will come over, take a look and review here. Again, if you guys are just joining us, go to Oh. Oh. That is as close Oh, it's on the as line. It can get and looks like a left toe. Of query maybe um, right there. Yep, right there. That is Rob Cassidy with the eyes. I mean, we, Chad and I both think that it's on the line, but Michelle Baumgartner over here reviewing looks like it just he just caught right there. But again, Chad, this may be why you and I are here in the booth and not reviewing this, but it's tough. to see here but again if you guys are watching at home and want to check out all of our courts are streaming here live today go to majorleaguepickleball.net click on that top banner so inconclusive evidence that it was on so we are back in play here. I'm never making a call again. That's why I'm not a referee. That's why you are not the referee, Chad, and that's why we are here in the booth. So we're all tied here at nine. Nice run here from DC. Uh, that's just, I think Query's got to move his feet just a little bit right there. He's there, he read it right, but was just flat footed a little bit. That ball not coming back from Sam Query. <laughs> Similar to uh, to Silstrom, who who is in this challenge league as well. We almost got him in the booth a couple of times a few weeks ago from his overheads. Oh, good jam shot there from Spencer Smith. And it'll be an 11-10, one-point lead as we change ends here for the Utah Black Diamonds. And Chad, impressed with DC, the Auburn Query team so far? Yeah, I think they were, it was a little bit of a slow start for them, but they cleaned a few things up and they were able to uh, kind of keep that pressure on Utah and, and kind of similar for Cassidy and Smith as well. It's it's very back and forth here as far as um, leaving balls up or, or a couple of untimely errors. So it'll be interesting here, this second half uh, of this of this game to see who, who can clean it up. If one of these teams is going to make a little bit of a run here and, and pull away. As we return back to play, it is Cassidy and Smith on the near end, Auburn and Query on the far end, and an 11 10 lead for the Black Diamonds. Nice finish there from Query again, Chad, getting big. It's a huge forehand. Well, even just the, the pickup here from... Yeah, nice finish. Good backhand roll. Yeah, good angle there from Spencer Smith. I'd probably say I'd like to see a Vern drive a couple of balls after the last few drops he's attempted have really set up. Yeah, 
Yeah, and, and Spencer guy, Smith upset with himself because he's like, that ball's so out. And it was as Query speeding up cross court. Not a lot of room to work with over there. And good pressure right there from the Black Diamonds. They get the side out here. 13-12, one point lead. Oh, what a pull. And Chad, we're right down that line. We saw Auburn ready to pull that two-hander. Does a great job of not over hitting that ball too. Set it up. 13-13. Good reach in there from Smith. And a good job from both Smith and Cassidy there moving DC around. The ball was wide. I was over here looking. I'm like, I saw a green. <laughs> I'm, I'm not calling balls in or out. Anymore. No, you're not. I'm done. You're right. I'm done. You're, you're not allowed. You've lost that privilege. Plus, I couldn't see it anyway. <laughs> Smith was in my way. All tied up here now, 14 apiece. So, Chad, you made that call. You'd like to see Auvern drive a couple more. He's hit a couple good drives on his third. The problem is the fifth on both when we tried to drop and both in the net. I like the move from Query. I think that's the right ball to come around and try to speed up, but he just came too flat on it. What a drop by Spencer Smith from the baseline in the middle of that point. He was behind the baseline, cut that backhand drop beautifully. The timeout here from the DC Pickleball Club. Uh, Vernon Query down by three. What's the answer here, Chad, for DC to try and get back in this? Well, I think they've just got to extend the point a little bit more. We saw a couple of errors from, from Query. We've seen the last error there from uh, Vern. Utah is moving DC around more than what DC is trying to do with Utah, right? If that if that makes sense. So I would like to see them, like I said, prolong the point, push Smith back out away from the middle of the court. Once Cassidy comes over to, to try to cover middle, then you spread him out as well. Then they get the opportunity and the right ball to speed it up rather than trying to pull that trigger too soon. It's a three point lead here for the Black Diamonds. As Connor Pardo, owner of the Black Diamonds, has joined his team on the bench. As they creep closer to a 2 0 lead. And a missed return from Query will give the Black Diamonds a four point lead. Going for the roll backhand. I mean, he had Query beat. Yes. Query thought that the point was actually done because he never even turned around to see where that ball went. Where that ball went, but Auvergne was there to cover middle. Yeah. Wow, Rob Cassidy right there. Great speed ups. 
at Query. Query handling it. Well, Cassidy challenging right there as he comes up and Query pulls the trigger. Ball goes out as Utah does not get to 20, but once one of these teams does get to 20, they will freeze. We'll be side out scoring. Come on, Stefan. Wow, Spencer Smith had Auburn thinking he was going to speed that up, and he just drops it in. And the Black Diamonds are now frozen at 20. But they can win it here on their serve. And they do off the tape. Spencer Smith gets Auburn to pop that up and out. And it is a 21-16 victory for the Utah Black Diamonds. Chad, DC now has their backs up against the wall. This is a tough hold to lot out of. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure that's now put on the DC team, mixed doubles teams, because you have to be clean here. No mistakes. A lot of pressure, and unfortunately what we've seen in both the women's and the men's doubles matches here is that DC is the team that is making more unforced errors, and that in itself has cost them those, those two games. All right, so that being said, lineups will get set. We'll take a minute here, let you guys watch warm-ups as they check out. Right now, what their lineups are going to be. You guys can check out Championship Court or any of our other four courts streaming. We'll be right back here with Mixed Doubles. Tem 
seconds. Welcome back. We got mixed doubles for you. So it was DC who put their team out first, and they go with Stefan Auvergne and Shelby Bates. The Diamonds counter with Michelle Esquivel and Spencer Smith. Oh, what? <laughs> hey, hey, just get out of Stefan Auvergne's way right now. He's, he's trying to take the Shelby whole court. Shelby just, just split the sideline over there. Yeah. He's got it covered. Auvergne's got it right now. One zero. So it's an odd call, Chad, for us in that Utah goes with Whoa. two righties, two lefties. So as, as Esquivel's the, going for a challenge. Early. early. Yeah, early. So we are challenging that call, and Bates called it out. Esquivel thinks it's in. What do you think of that, Chad? It's an early challenge. I don't I don't really I th particularly agree with an early challenge like even, that. Even if, you, even, even if it was out, you're down 2-0. Right. You've got a whole lot of game left. I mean, I would save that challenge. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll see is again Michelle Baumgartner. She's been busy. Oh, and the tough part is that Shelby Bates is in the way of the camera. So it's very hard for us to see here. Way to block the, ca the camera there, Bates. And, oh, here we go. We got another angle and the ball does look out. So great work again by our camera crew. Boxcar Productions here all weekend taking care of everything. But look at our camera crew looking at that. And looks like we'll see what the call is here. So call does stand. Ball is out. And it'll be a 2-0 lead here for DC. Tough as that ball just rolls over for Spencer Smith on the tape. Good ball there from Avon. Heavy spin down at the feet of Spencer Smith. Three one. One lead here for DC early. Good start for DC as Chet backs up against the wall. Need this victory to stay in it. Wow, what an inside out there from Auvergne. And DC seems to be rolling here in mixed doubles so far. But the big, the big thing for Ravon there is his footwork. His footwork gave him the ability to set himself up to hit that angle. Yeah! Oh, 
Big man getting real big here. It's a different Stefan Alvern from men's doubles. Good setup there from Smith. And it's interesting that you brought that up with Avon. You know, making he looks like a different player than from men's doubles. A lot of times that happens with those aggressive plays when they go into mix. Now they have some freedom of movement and they can get in that rhythm. And that's how Avon plays, is he's moving and, and aggressive. Another good yep. pick up there from Smith. Uh, but when you're in men's doubles and you got two two guys there, then you kind of box yourself in a little bit and then your feet get flat and you're, you mm -hmm. lose the rhythm. Oh. And the ball was out. Oh, I'm done. I'm done. I'm over. I'm dude, I'm over two. So ball call was overturned. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, I'm done. Ted, I'm done. stop I'm done. guessing I'm done. on I'm balls in and out. Just stop, now. <laughs> We're in our match one of 30 this weekend. Good pressure there from Michelle Esquivel on the return, had Bates on her heels. Good cover for uh, from Auburn in the middle. But just a little long. Tough ball right there as Smith and Esquivel continue to roll here. Ball came out just a little flat off of Esquivel's paddle. Not able to get it up and over the net. Nine, Gonna be long off the paddle of Spencer Smith. One point away here from an end change for Auvergne. Bates and the DC Pickleball Club. Wow, that all started from a great drop from Shelby Bates to allow Auburn to come in and get big. It's 11 6 lead. And Chad, this is where, you know, I talked with, you know, some, some players yesterday and talking about the DC team and talking with other people. And they thought that Auburn should have been this aggressive in men's doubles as well with. Sam Query. Just because Sam is so new, he should have been more the aggressor, let Query get his feet wet there. They don't, they lost, but this is the Auvergne that I wanted to see in men's doubles as well. And that's, that's the Auvergne that, that typically we'll see. We've seen him play with Jul Julian Arnold in, in quite a few tournaments. Uh, and you got two aggressive players there. But again, the amount of court that Query takes up kind of blocks of earn with right, how much right. he's unless you tell query hey you know just straddle the sideline it's it's a, it's a little bit of a difficult task in in men's doubles yes. oh well change up there pulling the string is spencer smith edge guard helps Glasses are not working for Esquivel right now. She tosses them out. Oh, he babied it. He right? tried to be controlled. Yeah. And everything slowed down. I don't mind that idea right there. That ball's there for Esquivel. I, 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 think it, I think it just got a little too deep on her though to try to attempt that. Oh, 
Nice roll. What a drop from Beats right there. And that's another part of, of the game that's coming into more now is heavy top spin drops and, and rolls from the baseline where it used to be more of an open face drop. I like that move right there. That's not a bad move if she can execute. But that's the difference, Chad, is you gotta execute at this level right now. But still a four point lead here for DC. Good drop there from Esquivel. Bates looked up to see where Smith was and caught that one off the end of the paddle. from both these ladies, but Esquivel coming on top of that cross-court battle. Wow, that pull from Smith, that's off his shoe tops right there. So timeout here by DC. Black Diamond's able to bring it back within one. Smart timeout from DC, but good pressure here from the Utah Black Diamonds the last last few points. Yeah, and a, and a good like answer, right, for the Black Diamonds as they were down by four. Now back within one here. What's the difference maker for the Black Diamonds right there, Chad, that they've allowed to get back in? Well, they've taken some chances, but they've they've taken somewhat of, of calculated risk, going for body, not allowing a Vern to get fully extended that he needs to be to play his aggressive style. We saw Esquivel put some pressure in the cross court on Bates with a good cross court dinking. Ball again, Spencer Smith just digging some stuff out right there. Good drive there from Avern and good footwork again. Able to get around that backhand and rip a forehand. just coming up on that one right there. Needs to stay down and through that ball. Good coverage there from Bates. Close that two-hander off. defense there from Bates, Chad. Good defense from Bates, but a couple of smart things that she did is that she took the pace off a couple of those balls. She didn't overhit it, she just added spin. So when Smith reached for it, he ended up popping it up. Good aggression there from Smith on those balls that were sitting up. Oh, nice.
high sleeve. I like that pull, though, from Smith. I like him to go right down the middle with that ball, though. Yeah, down the middle or, or if anything, back into the body. He was trying to twist up Bates, which he did, but ran into the short court. A little confusion in the middle right there. And Chad can't have that here late in this game. The timeout here from the Black Diamonds. A little confusion on the timeout, but a good timeout here, Chad, as they need to regroup here down by five. A game of run so far as we're seeing and the run now here late for DC. What's made that happen? Well, I think yeah, we saw a little bit of frustration, a little bit of miscommunication there on that last ball through the middle. It kind of seemed like uh, Esquivel and Smith were now they were, they were taking some good calculated risks now as we got or as we're getting deeper into this, they were trying to do too much trying to, to speed up some balls uh, and go for a little too much and some errors have creeped in. And good court coverage from Bates and Avern have, have created a little bit more of that, that pressure on Esquivel and Smith. A little wide there, cross court on the forehand. And now DC with the much needed answer here. Our frozen on 20, one point away from getting on the board here. Little damage right there from Spencer Smith on Bates. Get back, DC. 15, 20. Ooh, balls out. Just wide. I, I'm pretty sure, although I've been wrong all the time today on the outline. Yes, you have. That falls. Escobar's ball is going. Out. What work from Michelle Escobar on that sideline, Chad, to get them back in this. Good, DC. Lock it down. 17 20. Good job from Avern to get on top of that drive from Esquivel. Off the tape right there. DC, Chad, they answer the bell. They are not done here. They answer, get on the board. It is now a 2-1 lead here and comes down to the final mixed doubles match. So we'll take a quick breather here and be back with that second mixed doubles match for you shortly.
We are back here on Grandstand Court. All comes down to the final mixed doubles matchup. Chad, Black Diamonds with a 2-1 lead. If they win this, all over. DC wins, we're going to the Dream Breaker. Predictions here from a very new team, Query and Palicelli, taking on the veterans, McMillan and Cassidy. Well, I can make a prediction, or I can tell you what I want. I want DC to win this one so we get we the want the Dream Breaker. We want the Dream Breaker <laughs> early here. Uh, but I think, yeah, it's this is this is a tougher matchup here for DC, uh, but. You know, if they carry some of the momentum that Avern and Bates were able to create with that win there, anything's doable. Oh, Cassidy having none of that little flick from Query. Watch the great hands from Rob Cassidy on this forehand flick from Sam Query. And that's a good ball from Query. But you just have to recognize that Cassidy has phenomenal hands and gets balls back. So I was watching Query there, and it's something that you picked up on in, in men's doubles as well is he's so worried about getting beat out wide that he's giving up the middle. And you'll see me, Sammy hits, he takes a step to the left. Yeah, now McMillan feeding off of Cassidy. She pulls the trigger right on Palicelli and gets a ball up. See, and this is the problem. Palicelli took a ball in the middle with her forehand. This is where Query needs to come over and take that with his forehand and finish it. And it's an early timeout from DC. Are you seeing something very similar to what I was just no, explaining? No, I mean, that's, that's exactly what I'm saying. You, Query needs to use his height, his reach, his power advantage, and really take control of that middle. Palicelli is not an overly aggressive player. She's a very good counter puncher or a defensive player. She moves balls around well and gets balls back, but she can't be the one trying to speed that ball up or pull the trigger or even cover that middle on the majority of the balls. 
No, you're exactly right. And we're going to see if DC has the answer here. It's a 4-0 lead for the Black Diamonds here early in this second Mitch Doubles matchup. Utah with a 2-1 lead. Looking to end it here and not go to the Dream Breaker. Hit there from Sam Query and Utah continuing to roll here up 5 0. And Cassidy on it though, just missing that off the tape, but DC does get on the board here. Cassidy right in the side of the face there off the tape, but Query's gonna take it right now as they're trying to get back in this. Dropping right on the line right there. DC going to take it. A uh, little run of their own here. 3 0 run after getting down early. 5 0. Switch, but still red. So Cassidy trips up McMillan here. He Ste they, yeah, they stepped on a right foot. Yep. And now they get eye formation. Don't know where to go. And here comes DC, though. Good answer there from Utah. As they stop the run from DC and take a two point lead. I like that pull though from Query right there. That's the right spot. Yeah, it's just poor execution in, in that regard. You know, coming with a flat paddle above the ball a little bit. Very difficult to get over the net on that ball. It has to be underneath. Pelicelli a half step slow getting to the middle right there. I still think that though that Query needs to go with more than one ball. So yeah, he yes. attacks that one, then look for the next one to go. That's something that needs to come into his game. I think Paolicelli almost wanted to let that ball go, but decides to play it. Yeah, just in between right there was Query and Black Diamond's answer here. Here we go, guys, let's go. Cassidy feeling a little confident there, trying to go backhand roll down the line. You got a, you got a little bit of room to work with right now. You can, you can take some risks. Well, he fixed it right away. He went back to the same shot, fixed it, but Query was ready for it. Yeah, let's uh, let's put that one back in the bag for a little while. Nice. 
nice pull right there and a good lead from Pelicelli as she lets that one go. And DC back in this now. That ball had a lot of topspin on it. I watched watched everything through that motion there, and he just gets underneath it, brushes up consistently, makes it look like it's going to fly off, and just drops over the shoulder of McMillan. Nice inside out forehand there from Cassidy as they will take an 11 6 lead here on an end change. You can see as DC here regrouping, trying to figure out what they want to do here. What do they need to do though here, Chad, to get back in this? Yo, know, it's 11 it's, 8, excuse me. Yeah, it's it's been a definitely a a battle for DC uh, in this one. They've, they've shown some flashes of really good play, but from what I'm seeing across the board from this DC team, it's it's just the the consistency within their strokes, within their their attacks, that's kind of hindering them a little bit. Well, as we come back into play. 11-8 lead here for the Utah Black Diamonds. And will be their serve. Trying to end it here. DC trying to force the Dream Breaker. Yeah, both Chad and I are looking at each other on that floater in the middle that we thought McMillan should have <laughs> came in and ripped that two hand. Up. And she loves to do it too, yeah. and she just hesitated just a little. And it ends up hurting them too. DC gets a side out yeah. and another point. So this is going to be a close one down to the end, it looks like, Chad. Just like that, with rally scoring and a couple of unforced errors. Keep it together, Sam. Let's go, Sam. All tied here at 11. Confusion and see the difference is, is there that Pilicelli's not used to Query coming over like he should yeah. and take that ball. She wasn't ready for him to be there. to drop that ball short, but that's a matter of knowing your opponent. Cassidy's in transition, he's gonna get that every time. Now you bring them back up and now it's a neutral point. It's kind of a baited float right there. She probably didn't mean to leave it that high. She being Paleocelli there, but Cassidy not getting the best spot to attack from. So <laughs> Cassidy apologizing for that ball, but he'll take it and they will take 14-12 lead here for Utah. Getting on top of that enough. Sailing long. You're good. You're good. You get the next one. She the correct server? Yes, sir. 15 12. 
Movement there from Query. Right foot, left foot. Just keeping Cassidy off balance enough. on the line. I like that ball from Olivia McMillan, Chad. Yeah, very good ball from McMillan there. Paleo Celli not sliding over to cover that line either. Gave her that out down the line. Good pull there from Query going behind Cassidy. Cassidy very strong defense on balls right at his body. That one a little further out. That's a nice roll there. But that's from where, Query. see now Query's starting to move a little bit more. You know, putting the pressure on. When he's, guys that have size and length, when you get back on your heels, it's very difficult to speed a ball up or be consistent. Oh, he went to hit, then he went to take back. And tried to make a read there, but ball looked like it was going to sail wide because Cassidy backhanded it and sliced it. Yeah! Oh, Rob Cassidy, just great defense, putting his nose right in it. <laughs> the tape right there. I like the spot, but he just rushed it a little too much. Oh, right between the legs of Cassidy, back within one. But that was smart there because the last couple of balls that Query's gone at Cassidy full pace, he's gotten back. That one, he, he, he slowed it down a little bit, and then the ball dropped before he got to the paddle. Paleocelli <laughs> getting stuck on the back foot there. The ball flattened out. 19-17 here for the Black Diamonds. Ball gonna go wide as Seattle Pioneers are right behind us on court. Tyler Lung and Ben Johns watching closely. And now the Black Diamonds and DC are frozen here at 2018. Side out scoring the remainder of the way. Yes. The miss hit from Palacelli on the backhand will give the Black Diamonds a 3-1 victory here. It is so important to get on the board here early, Chad. Puts you in the driver's seat. Do you agree? I do agree. <laughs> I think, you know, it's, it's definitely a good start for the Utah Black Diamonds getting that first one under their belt. You know, learning a couple of things going forward. But I also think even though DC lost this one, it was a good first round for them as well. One thing that they need to focus on is both of their men being more aggressive uh, going into it and just cleaning up some of the mistakes. So Utah Black Diamonds taking the first one, looking to continue the roll throughout the day here. DC has to make up some ground. All right, so that'll do it for our first match here. Utah Black Diamonds taking an important 1-0 lead in pool play over the DC Pickleball Club. We'll take a little break here. Hold you guys here on Grandstand Court for our next matchup coming up shortly.
right, welcome back to Grandstand Court. Dominic Catalano alongside Chad Edwards on the call for this matchup here. Another good one in the challenger bracket, which we will have all day for you today. The Brooklyn Aces taking on the Dallas Pickleball Club. First, again, the ever so important women's doubles, Sierra Gaten Leach and Corinne Carr taking on Megan Fudge and Krista Gechiva. Chad? I'm going to screw that up. Yep, today. probably three or four times, yep. but that's fine. Um, predictions for this one early on? I am going to go with. Dallas Pickleball Club on this one uh, solely because of how we saw Megan Fudge play oh. last week and two weeks ago. She's brought a little bit of uh, aggression and offense into her game. Used to be a lot of just a defensive player, counter punch it, but she's starting to take some risks and playing really well. For Carr and Gaten and Leach, uh, I think the X factor there is going to be Gate and Leach. She can insert a lot of power, but she can also be very streaky as far as unforced errors. We are underway here. Women's doubles game number one. A little wide there from Carr. This is the first match for both of these squads. So match number one, very important here to see who gets on the board here first. Getting Leach missing that one in the net. Paddle getting just a little too far behind her. Unforced error there from Gechiva. Just shaking her head, going, Yeah, I'll fix that. We'll be fine. First one was close, second one definitely out. Balls are sailing here today, even though it is warming up a little bit more now. Almost still a feeling out process here early in this game. I was about to say the same thing. We've seen yeah. it in, in every game so far today. First six, seven points. Nice ball there from Gachiva, expecting that speed up from Carr in the middle. Gaten Leach switching to that ace paddle. I know that paddle's got a lot of pop to it from what I'm hearing from a lot of the players. Some of those, a couple of those balls and the gets from Carr, Gachiva is really able to create some good angles there. Ooh, Carr wants that one back. Again, just getting a little too big. Going back to your paddle comment, is there a paddle on the market nowadays that doesn't have pop? <laughs> You're so right, Chad. You're so right. Pop and spin. Oh, nice pull there from Gachiva, finding middle. Watch on the replay here. She reaches in with this forehand. Almost thinks or gets Carr leaning to her right. Oh, doubling up, speeding up right at Gate and Leach. Oh, Carr had it. It 
was there doesn't get around it enough. You watch herself, watch her clear herself here. It's there. Wow, game leads going left, right, left for the put away. Big, big, and bigger. Just had to take my third layer off for the day. I'm down to six now. I have not shed one yet. <laughs> Not a bad ball from Gaten Leach, but a better counter there from Gachiva in the middle. Yeah, it's an excellent job from Gachiva of not trying to do too much. Just getting a paddle on that keeps that ball down. Gaten Leach generating all the power for her to get it back. <laughs> Upset with herself for missing that ball right there. A great leave there from Megan Fudge as she reads that. Great spot in the middle from Gaten Leach. Yeah, and she's got easy power when she gets that ball out in front and can get extended on it. And we That's, spoke too that, much. Is, that is on you, Chad. Oh, <laughs> me. An 11 7 lead here for Dallas over Brooklyn. They'll change ends. Dallas with a four point lead. Are you seeing something from Brooklyn that they need to change here or adjust to, Chad? Well, I think, you know, they're, they're still finding it difficult to get their rhythm. Uh, we've seen a couple of good points, but then, you know, even even with that miss serve here in rally scoring, it's it's costly. So I think they need to clean some stuff up and, and just look for uh, potentially not trying to do too much with it. Fudge and, and Gachiva have had some couple of a couple of really uh, well placed and well timed counter attacks and blocks. And we're seeing group play, group A. The Diamonds, the Utah Black Diamonds and Bay Area Breakers up 1 0. So they won their first. And then Texas Ranchers and the Chicago Slice won their first. So all four of those teams sitting pretty so far. And it's the first match in group C here today. Wow, right off the hand, almost comes almost over. Got it back. Yeah, there's a good spot there from Carr. Reaching in, going right into the body of Gachiva. Oh no, she didn't. That was phenomenal. She goes inside out forehand. She starts this ball at the right shoulder of Gaten Leach and keeps it in in the corner. Great shot from Gachiva. Yeah. Oh, and Carr just says, I can do that too. <laughs> I've been doing it for way longer than you have. Yes, she has. <laughs> but you watch her take that ball right there on the replay. You let it, she lets it get outside of her body, almost like hitting a ball the opposite way. Let's it travel. Beautiful job from Corinne Carr. Gaten 
Gucci able to get on top of that and get that down at the feet of Gachiba. Yeah, but she was also slicing across her body with that one as well. That car on her heels on that ball. She's got to get on that front foot, be moving forward. her get fudge leaning to the sideline here Chad but that's and again that's something that Corinne has hit over and over and over again throughout the number of years that she's been playing A little lucky there from Gaten Leach. But going back to that ball from Carr, what sells it, and we saw it with Esquivel in, in the first match that we had here, is being able to hold the paddle in a certain position and just keep it there, and then reading your opponent and changing direction. Good pressure there from Gachiva as they regain that three-point lead of 15-12 here in the ever so important women's doubles match. long right there from gate and leach but trying to get a little extra on it Chad. and that's where the defense comes into it if you keep getting that ball back keep getting that ball back now all of a sudden have to try and hit that ball a little bit harder gate and leach trying to do just that that flattens out on her and, and ends up spraying uh, a little deep but for fudge and, and gachiva they've stayed fairly consistent here in this first women's doubles opener and it's been Carr and Gaten Leach that have allowed those errors to kind of creep in and that's been the difference here so far. I think for Fudge and Gachiva they've, they've just got to continue on the run that they've been having. Don't try to change too many things. Force Carr and Gaten Leach to make the adjustment and then if they do that's when they can change but for Carr and Gaten Leach Carr's had some success of, of deceptiveness going one down the line, one through the middle. And when they set up the play and they extend the point a little bit more, that's where they've had success. But Good ball there from Carr. Not a whole lot on it, but she's getting Gachiva to move and it becomes very difficult to control that ball once your feet are moving. Just wide there from Gachiva. Brooklyn Ace is just hanging around enough right now, Chad. And gets to that side out scoring, everything is totally changed. Car just battling right there in the middle. Yeah, so I was just about to say if I was fudging Gachiva, I would be going off the gate and leech rather than than car cars already shown that she's fairly consistent right now. Gate and Leach has been hit or miss. Nice flip from Gachiva. 
and a very patient point from all four of these ladies. I don't know if I'd fully call that a flip. She got some luck off of the net cord there that made it look like a flip, but she'll take it. <laughs> She's going to take it all day. Oh, a little indecision. She looks like she might have wanted to take that out of the air and doesn't. Go one at a time, ladies. Here we go. 16, 18. Good pressure there from Gachiva. Getting car to move, forcing the pop up, and then just getting on top of that ball and not trying to overpower it, hitting it through the middle. 19, 16. Defense there from Carr. Getting just enough on that ball to jam up Gachiva a little bit. Gachiva helping that by going too big with the backswing. Carr was like in between whether she wanted to attack that out of the air or let it drop. She lets it drop and then hits a very good ball here. And they're back within one. Just missing that ball is Gaten Leach, but we are all frozen here now. Rally scoring from now on. It's a game point for Dallas. That's a big ball there from Gaten Leach. So I've been watching Gachiva the last couple of points and one of the downsides of her motion is she really cuts at that ball. And if you're not absolutely perfect with that much movement, it's gonna pop the ball up and that's what we just saw there. Reading middle, and then Fudge goes back to a right hip. It's a good spot. Right on pit. <laughs> Another game point for Dallas. Ooh. That is the, that, wow. She held that to the last point. That's what I was talking to you about, Chad, when I saw her play last weekend. Yeah. The two-hander is big, and she hits it very hard, and it's a 21-18 victory for Fudge and Gachiva. What did you take away from that match, Chad, in the ever-so-important women's doubles matchup? Yeah, I think uh, Dallas kind of had a game plan when they were coming in and, and they stuck with it fairly well. Uh, they tried to test Car a couple of times, but the majority of success that they had was, was going uh, at Gate and Leach. For Brooklyn, it's kind of the same as what we saw in our first matchup today. The consistency and the unforced errors was, was their downfall. All right, we'll take a little break here for you guys. We'll stay here and watch warm up, but we'll take a little break. We'll be back with men's doubles here. Brooklyn Aces taking on the Dallas Pickleball Club.
It is all about men's doubles now here on Grandstand Court. Brooklyn Ace is taking on the Dallas Pickleball Club. It'll be Rob Nunnery and Greg Dow for the Brooklyn Aces, taking on Chuck Taylor and Brandon French for the Dallas Pickleball Club. Dallas in a 1-0 hole here. Excuse me, Brooklyn in a 1-0 hold. Dallas has the 1-0 lead. So a very important men's doubles matchup here for Brooklyn. Do not want to go down 2-0. It'll be Greg Dow to serve to Brandon French. Greg Dow and Rob Nunnery coming off of a big weekend last weekend in Boca. They played very well together, men's doubles. Taylor with the sky ball, so. The lob into the sun. <laughs> it's sky ball into the sun and then step up and rip mm -hmm. <laughs> drive right here. Gamesmanship right there. That's a nice ball oh. from Dow, but Taylor taking a little pace off that one to keep it in. Now nah, that was all edge guard again there from Mr. Taylor. God, Chad, you I'll are call tough. him on it. You, you are not giving him any credit. No, oh, I've given him credit. That oh, was a phenomenal freaking ball in. Nunnery going with the hat to eliminate the sky ball. <laughs> in the middle. Yeah, Nunnery got there, but he actually hit it into Dow's paddle. A 4-0 lead for Dallas. Oh, take that, says Nunnery, off the tape. Way to use the net there. We've got a little bit of wind picking up behind us now as well. So let's throw in the sun and the wind. This can get interesting out here. That's a nice pull there from Greg Dow. Good read. 
reach in. A good spot there from Chuck Taylor. Tough ball to pick up there for Dow. Oh, no, oh, he did it missed, again. He just missed it. Looked like Nunnery almost tripped stepping in. Oh, oh, and off the cheek of Chuck Taylor right there. He's trying to get out of the way. But, you know, body I shots. See, see Nunnery trip a couple times. I'm watching them. Both him and Dow have new KD shoes that they're wearing right yeah. now. I do not think that they're used to playing in those. No, nah, playing, playing in a basketball court shoe on a, on a pickleball court. Now, there is a little bit of sand and stuff on these courts. Nice, and the wind now picking up again, Chad, like you said. And now that ball being messed with on front right there. I don't think it was the ball. I think it was the wind. It was the wind, I think. All good boys, just go. Come on. One layer going back on thanks to the, thanks to the wind. Oh, he just missed it. Yes. Taylor going for the Ernie here, but can't. He had it, but I don't know if the ball, yeah, yeah. yeah, the ball got pushed down a little bit maybe by the wind. Oh, nice hands by Dow. A little inside out from Nunnery. Not even going to say anything. I thought it was out. Well, maybe if I say it out, they'd challenge it and then be in. Be in. Oh, nice ball there from Nunnery. Throwing in the two hander. That ball just sitting up too high from Taylor. It allows. Nunnery to hold his paddle right there and read Taylor as he was moving forward. Well, Taylor speeding up right at Nunnery. And I think if Nunnery is able to get out of the way of that ball, that ball goes out. <laughs> Good pull in the middle there from Chuck Taylor as Dallas takes a three point lead. Right here. Two, seven. No, that's out. Oh, no. Oh, come on. Oh, that's 11 7 lead here on an end change for Dallas in control. Same score on the end change here as women's with Dallas out in front by four. Again, Nunnery and Dow saw it, almost seemed to be a little shaken at the beginning going down by four early. What adjustments do they need to make here in the second half of this game? Well, they've got the, they're gonna have the wind and the sun behind them going here on the, on the end change now. So, you know, a, a little bit of an adjustment, but when you're working, with two elements in your face, it does become difficult to, to kind of stay on a rhythm. So we'll see how French and Taylor do now they're on that end.
just floating a little there for Nunnery. I don't know if you've looked at how Brandon French holds the ball. The, the, the paddle? paddle? Yes. I was just... I was just but looking at that. He's got it, the butt in the middle of his palm, and then he's got kind of like a crawl grip, grip yep. down the handle. I did see that. Go Chuck Taylor, go. <laughs> all, all over the court there is Taylor putting a ton of pressure on. Not rolling over there for Chuck Taylor, but still a four point lead here for Dallas. Good defense wow. from French, and then the speed up. Now he's timing just a little off and pulls that one wide. The ball we almost, almost caught it in the booth. Yep, almost got it and made it to the booth. Good spot and control there from Brandon French as he finds a hole in the middle. A little love off the net for Nunnery. Whippy action there for French. That claw grip kind of keeps that wrist nice and nice and relaxed. Able to snap it as he hits through. A good spot from Dow. That ball sitting up too high from Taylor. Dow able to get on top of it, get it down to the feet of French. Yeah, good work from Dow right there. Not anticipating that ball going to be out, plays it cleanly. Within three here is Brooklyn. Oh, that good. ball almost played off the belly of Taylor. Yeah, good job by Taylor being able to clear his body to get a paddle on that last ball. Didn't get to him. The wind held that ball up, but didn't get to Taylor. Good adjustment there by Taylor. 18, and stay in. Wow, <laughs> ball went between his paddle and his face. Huge overhead here from Nunnery. 
Big point here for Nunnery and Dow in the aces. Inside out there from French. Yeah, and a good good attack and a good spot. Dow jumping up on that ball a little bit, very hard to keep that, or very difficult to keep that down into the court. That's not gonna get Oliver. <laughs> Wind holding that ball up, not going to get a chance to get back over. 16-19, aces are down. Yeah! Oh, Brandon French stepping in front of Taylor there to take that. The reverse backhand flick. I got a better... French saying, I got a better backhand than your forehand, Taylor. <laughs> and now Dallas is up 2016. They are frozen. Rally scoring for Dallas. Brooklyn still has two points to get on the rally scoring side before they're frozen at 18. But game point for Dallas. Wind didn't help any there for Taylor on the cut. Oh, on the cut drop, and it just pushed that ball down into the net. Oh, Nunnery can't get any love there, but it's just a side out. It'll be game point number two here for Dallas. Brandon French serving. I like that. I like the decision by Taylor to get out of that cross court um, from Nunnery, because Nunnery loves that backhand cross court dink. But now both teams frozen. Almost gets there. almost jumped into it <laughs> as he jumped and tucked the shoulder. They fight off a third game point. Oh, just deep. The he wind created, didn't help. Yeah, he created the hole and then just overcooked it and throw in the wind that pushed it a couple inches deep. And Dow and Nunnery fight off four match points. 18, oh, nice talk there from Nunnery to Dow, as I think he scared him a little bit. <laughs> Dow nods his head as he heard us. Big point here for Dow and Nunnery and the Aces. Nice hands from Dow. Yeah, good counter attack there. Recognized that Taylor was going to reach in and try to flick that into the body. Uses Taylor's power to go back at him. All tied at 20 now. You. Doesn't get up the enough. Easy, yeah, the easy ball was more difficult to get over because it didn't have any pace on it. Boys. 
Connery just hit it. Yeah, I like this time out here, Chad, from Dallas, trying to regroup here as this will be. Offensive. Oh, no, it, it won't be because they had four match points. We're yep. tied at 20, but a good time out here from Dallas. Yeah, offensive timeout. Just trying to get them back into the, the right mindset. Like you said, they lost the opportunity of, of a couple of, uh, of match points there. Brooklyn Aces able to shut them down and then get a couple of points to draw us all square. I think for Dallas Pickleball Club, need to get back to moving Nunnery and Dow around. Had some success opening up the middle. All right, we'll see what happens after this timeout. Dallas taking that timeout to regroup 2020. Shake and bake. Oh, well, Brandon French is staring the down, stare down Greg for? Dow for? I'm not sure what the stare down was for. No, he had a good shake and bake. Simple as that. Did his job. All oh, right there, Nunnery giving it right back right away as they fight off the fifth game point. Okay. Come on. A little bit of chirping there after the miss of. Oh, it's a good ball from Nunnery getting on top of that. I think Taylor played an out ball. I don't think I you know. I know for yeah. that effect on that one. He hit that ball above his head and it was coming flat off the paddle. Yeah, good pressure there from Taylor. Nunnery getting a little tied up with the footwork. So game point number seven here for French and Taylor. That ball oh, in. dropping in beautifully <laughs> from Nunnery. Back and forth battle here right now. But I mean, seven squandered opportunities though for Dallas here, Chad. Can't finish. from Rob Nunnery. One-hander whips yeah. this back around. French, French is trying to go back middle, and that's kind of the issue there is when you're trying to take a ball middle with your backhand and not allowing that forehand to go with it, you open up the line. All right, but no game point here as they've squandered seven, but we're all tied here at 21. A piece of paper flew on the court. We'll redo that serve. had the around the poles, but it kind of hung up a little bit. Felt like he needed to roll that one or shape that one back in too much. Game point number eight. Yeah! Oh, French again with the shake and bake right there as they take this game 22 or 23 to 21 here. What a battle, Chad. Yeah, good job there from both teams, but Dallas Pickleball Club coming out just a little too strong. It was a good fight. 
from the Brooklyn Aces. Now they're the Aces with their backs up against the wall have to come out and battle here in mixed doubles just to force it to the Dream Breaker. We will keep you guys here for warm up. We'll take a quick break ourselves. And when we come back on the mic, it'll be our first round of mixed doubles here in this first round matchup in group play for the Brooklyn Aces and Dallas Pickleball Club. We
Mixed doubles here about to start on grandstand court. The Aces had to lay their cards down first. They went with Carr, Corinne Carr, and Rob Nunnery. The Dallas Pickleball Club going with Krista Gachiva and Brandon French. Dallas needs one more point to take the match. We will play both <laughs> mixed doubles matches regardless though, because points do matter here for a tie break, but Dallas can solidify a win here with a victory from Gachiva and French. Nice pull down the line there from Brandon French. Yeah, Carl got caught sitting on the backhand side a little too much. Good drop, a little confusion there from Gachiva and French. I'm one French stepping over there, but I think he's got to step over and then just follow down behind the ball, try to come back across the court with his movement. Gives you some confidence if you can come over and take a very ambitious earning attempt, but your partner's just sitting there in the middle of the court to rip a two-handed back in. Good ball there from Nunnery, pushing Gachiva back all the way on the baseline. going to be able to overpower by hitting the ball through the court. So French making the right choice to go with the sharp angle out wide. Yeah! Wow. French staring down Nunnery again. Still not sure what that's all about. If there's a backstory or anything, but I mean, it's a good block, but. Yeah, better spot there from Carr. And took a little bit of pace off of it, so. One of the things with aggressive guys there going in the middle, if you just slow a ball down behind them, A little wide there from Carr. I heard French telling Gachiva he's going to be a little more patient. And as you said, he reaches in and flicks a ball that was way out of reach. Usually how that happens. Good ball there in the middle from French again. Still trying to figure out that grip. Yeah, it's a different grip than what we typically see. Then again, I've got a different grip on my paddle too. I only hold it with two fingers. The bottom, bottom two are hanging off the end. Great spot there from Nunnery, the one-two combo. Oh, Good spot there from Gachiva. 
Going crossbody on number on nunnery. Hey, nunnery, nunnery. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> And a nice pull in the middle, doubling up as French. Good aggressive play. Four point lead for Dallas. That ball slid a little bit and sped up on French right before he went to drive. Ended up coming up on, coming up on that ball a little too much and spraying it deep. And then Nunnery cutting his finish short on the attempted drive on the way back. I'm just trading side outs here. Right. I was, and I was going to say in that situation there, French lets Gachiva get that. He can then go up to the kitchen line and put pressure on. Excellent get by Gachiva there on the ball out wide. So side out, or not side out here, end change, excuse me. 11-7 lead here for the Dallas Pickleball Club over the Brooklyn Aces. Brooklyn Aces do need this one to stay alive in the match. We will play that second mixed doubles match for point reasons, or if even if the Brooklyn Aces do lose this match. But what do Nunnery and Carr need to do here to kind of handle the pressure from French and Gachiva? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, French and Gachiva have done a good job of being aggressive and putting the pressure on Car and Nunnery. The Car and Nunnery timing's just off a little bit. Uh, you know, we talk about prolonging the point all the time. I think they have to try to slow themselves down, kind of keep Gachiva out wide, which will draw French into the middle a little bit more. And then once he comes middle, push back out wide behind him uh, to get them moving. And create some create some holes. As we come back in here from the end change, it'll be Brand and French serving for Dallas with a four point lead. That's yeah, great hands there from Corinne Carr and Rob Nunnery. Kachiva got really big on that second one. Good start here for Brooklyn. I don't know if Nunnery just did, didn't he, see he it. He didn't see it. He was way ahead of that one. You saw him just kind of swing in the direction of the ball. Well, right. It's almost like Morgan Evans was out on the court there. Well, nice little inside out forehand from Nunnery as we do have the great Morgan Evans behind us here. He'll be jumping in on the mic after this match. Yeah. That ball is going to end up in the Margaritaville tent. You know what, though? Hitting a high overhead looks better than letting a ball go. Feels so, so good. <laughs> why not? Yeah, for, for grandstand court, we've got two Australians all weekend long. Oh, boy. Everybody's lucky with that one. Stand down again. I don't, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't get it. Still can't figure it out. But good hands by French there, staying in that. Kept his team alive. Back to a four point lead. Oh, and French letting that go, thinking it's going to go long, but a great ball from Rob Nunnery. Oh, I don't think he had much other option there. Couple of. Unorthodox pancakes, and then Nunnery came back a little bit more into into that right armpit. Watch. Yeah. Mm. Let's try.
tried to buggy with that one. Just slap at it, took it down into the net. Nice drop by Carr. Caused by the pressure of Nunnery as he came over to poach. Almost faked it. Got to take another half step. He hits it yeah. off the edge guard right there. If he yeah. takes another half step. Another half step, but even there, I, I don't know if that's a fully attackable ball. Yes, come across and take that, go behind French potentially. Good spots from Nunnery. You knew as soon as Nunnery was able to step in, he was going to go right at French with that, as French never retreated. 14, 15. Good finish there from Gechiva. Back to a two-point lead for French, Gachiva, and the Dallas Pickleball Club. So good. Good shape on that. I don't even know if you call that a drive, kind of a, a medium pace ball there between a, a drive and a drop. But it had really, really good shape on it, kind of handcuffed car, giving Dallas Pickleball Club a three-point lead. In the driver's seat here, Chad, 17-14. Again, Dallas just putting on pressure, never giving up or getting any deeper than a two-point, you know, edge. Brooklyn keeps answering but can't get any closer than two. We'll see what Nunnery, Carr, and Brooklyn have after this timeout. Yeah, I'd like to see Brooklyn keep going at Gachiva, but Gachiva wide to try to force French to be more and more aggressive. Then it opens up that hole down the line. It'll be Brandon French serving here. Brandon French going with the Burt and then cross court winner here. Watch him step right in front of Gachiva. She gives him some room. work there as you watch Brooklyn and Nunnery and Carr just stay calm throughout that whole chaotic kind of sequence from Dallas and they end up with the point. Achieva yeah. saw that before. All over that. <laughs> Read it the whole way. She seen Nunnery do that in men's doubles and she was ready for it. <laughs> Trying to be a little too cute down the line with it. Pushes it wide. Great return there from Gachiva will give Dallas a match point or game point here in this first mixed doubles matchup. Ball 
goes long from Carr. And Chad, Dallas will win the match overall, but we will still go to that second mixed doubles matchup. Thoughts on this match here, or this game here, between French Kachiva and Unran Carr? No, I think it was a good job by French and, and Kachiva there of applying pressure throughout. You know, French was was aggressive, took some risks, and and Gachiva allowed him to do that. That was she was there for coverage, and did an excellent job. Finnery and Carr and the Aces. I'll say it, I've said it almost every game today. The consistency, the unforced errors, is what has really been the difference. <laughs> So teams are shaking hands, almost looks and acts like they're not playing that second mixed doubles matchup, which we were informed that they are playing it. But we will see here. We'll take a quick time off air. We'll keep it on screen here for the warm up. We'll be right back. So just we've just been informed that they have had a rule change and they will not play that. It'll be a 3-0 victory for Dallas here. So they will be on the board with one victory for the day. Very important victory for them as Brooklyn will drop to 0-1 and try and battle themselves back later on. But our next matchup here on championship court or on grandstand court, excuse me, will be at noon. So we have a little time here. So the next matchup here at noon will be the Chicago Slice and the Miami Pickleball Club here on Grandstand Court coming up for you guys here at 12 o'clock our time here. It'll be 10 o'clock on the East Coast for you guys back home, but we'll just keep it here. And at 12 o'clock, be back. Chicago Slice, Miami Pickleball Club. Don't want to miss that second round matchup in pool play.
Major League Pickleball is in Mesa, Arizona. We're picking up soon with another Challenger Series matchup. It is, of course, the Chicago Slice versus Miami Pickleball Club. That means Susanna Barr and Emily Ackerman are going to be taking on Alex Trung and Regina Goldberg. Alongside me is none other than Brandon Nsipong. Am I, am I saying that right? Insect Park, man. Insect. I'm happy, to, I'm happy right. to be here. It is beautiful here in Arizona. Um, Morgan, this is an awesome venue for Major League Pickleball, isn't it? It's it's fantastic. It's uh, it's one of those moments where you, you recognize the growth of the game. Such an amazing facility here. And uh, they, they just host so many events, like a lot of good programming going on here. And I think the Major League Pickleball has found a, a perfect spot. Yeah, and I mean, how awesome is it to see in a tournament of this style where we've got all of the best pro pickleball players, all of the best staff, the best referees, all in one place, right? There's no yeah. segmentation now, we're here. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. We have the best of the best. And this matchup is intriguing. What are you looking to see here, Brandon? Yeah, so this first matchup with, with the women going out, obviously they each want to set the tone. Uh, that's going to be one of the most important pieces. Energy, as we know, is so huge in MLP. And so I'll be trying to see which ladies team comes out with the fire immediately. We know that they want to get into their soft game at times. And they want to control the pace. But I think starting out aggressive and then dialing it back as they see fit is probably going to be the best strategy for a team to win this matchup. Yeah, I think the, the player on the court with the most sort of unique style is uh, going to be Susanna Barr, who certainly has a, an aggressive uh, forehand and double-handed backhand. However, her often strategy is dinking cross-court, defending really well, um, has a bit more patience than some of the other players. She is the veteran on the court. And uh, let's see. Looks like we'll be getting underway soon. We'll find out who's serving first. Yeah, you've got two vets. You've got Regina Goldberg, Susanna Barr, been playing pro pickleball for o over four years now. And on the other side, you've got kind of up and coming crew. You've got Alex Trung, you've got Emily Ackerman, who have had some great results recently. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how they take on this challenge today. Yeah, Alex Trung is only 18 years old out of uh, Falls Church, Virginia. Emily Ackerman, 22, San Luis Obispo. She credits uh, the man Wesley Gabrielson for bringing her into the game. It's yeah. probably not a bad exposure. No, not at all. How awesome is it to see, you know, pros teaching other pros, right, and kind of helping progress the game forward? Uh, it's a beautiful sight. <sighs> okay, and on court as well, Jeff Warnick, Matt Manassi, they will be supporting their team. Yeah, and we can't forget for Miami Pickleball Club, they've got one of, if not the greatest hecklers in pro pickleball. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> Johnny Goldberg on the sidelines. So it'll be interesting to see how he affects this game with his energy, how, yeah. he, how it materializes for his team. Yeah, that man still owes me an apology. He knows it. Um, but uh, <laughs> all's well that ends well. We, we, we did win the match, so I'll forgive him. <laughs> Great personality. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, opposing on the team of Ackerman and Barr is Connor Garnett and Ryla DeHart. I tell you, a lot of people are very high on Connor Garnett. And obviously, Ryla DeHart, former professional tennis player, uh, narrowly lost to Rafa Nadal in 2008. Yeah, they've, um, they've got a great team. And, and speaking of Connor Garnett, but he's had probably the highest duper change in the last 90 days of over one point, uh, wow. which is insane. Uh, so look for him to continue to rise and put his imprint in MLP this week. Yeah, watching some of his points against uh, Ben Jones in singles, very, very impressive. All right, Alex Trung to get the show on the road. Already some energy there from Ackerman with an out ball. Yeah, it seems like the message came through clear. Let's start <laughs> with energy. <laughs> That's a great lob. I think she deserved more than that. It was a fantastic lob from Ackerman. Great to see her really thinking outside the box early over 
the backhand side of Regina Goldberg. That's a huge drive from Alex. The, the weather's warming up here. It was colder earlier. I think you're still going to see some drives, but they'll probably dial it back some. I think that might have been an out ball. Not too much top spin on the drive from Goldberg. Looks like the spirit of AJ Kohler lives within the ladies right now. Oh, and it worked. We are we are five <laughs> lobs in. That's, uh, that's perpetuating perpetuating the idea you should lob third balls. Yeah, uh, take a look at this. The first lob defended, gets in, and able to continue and get the error there. Do not try that at home, folks. Uh, you can if you want, but um, possibly not high percentage pickleball. <laughs> if you're as skilled as these ladies, they may get away with it. overhead from Barr. Yeah, it's great patience overall, but you see here, Alex, a little bit greedy with the lob, decides to go over, probably the wrong shoulder for Susanna Barr, and she's used to that one. Yeah, now she's got a, a good quality overhead. Referees just having a quick chat. I think I'm always gonna love this song. It's just a great song. It's a classic. Good leave. Yeah, we're still kind of in the filling out process in this game, right? The first few points, each team is trying to understand what the attacks look like and how to defend it. Great defense. Oh. oh. <laughs> and the net wins this one. Uh, you see great defense there by Regina Goldberg. They stay in the point, but ultimately the net lord survives. <laughs> Let's see if the pickleball gods have any payback in mind. Yes. And speaking of the lobs, Morgan, I think they're noticing that the sun is really beaming down right now, and they want to use that as an advantage as we've already seen seven. A little bit of wind kicked up there and that ball kind of skidded through. On the screen, the wind is pushing against the team of Ackerman and Barr. So they're using both the sun and the wind to assist with their lobs. Yeah, that ball there just got a little bit away from Alex. To your point on the wind, it just moved a little bit inside. Hard to judge those balls. Uh, Goldberg really took a lot of pace off that two-handed backhand. I, either she's feeling a little cautious, not quite sure how much the wind is going to carry the ball, or she just doesn't want to make too many mistakes right yet. And I think in these conditions, you know, one of the best things to do is keep the ball and play as much as possible, right? You don't have to take the risky chances with mm. the wind uh, and force the other team to make an error this early on. Great example there, right? Yeah. A normal routine ball that Ackerman probably gets over, but it moves a few inches to her left and becomes a little bit difficult. Oh, and uh, some signage just being caught by the breeze. Pro XR pickleball. It's an interesting way to get a timeout, right? You just uh, knock over the uh, sign. Yeah, it's genius. <laughs> Let's see if someone gets a grip on that Pro XR pickleball sign. It could be good marketing from Pro XR, right? Yeah, they, they yeah. Time it I thought it was a quality pun. <laughs> And as I live and breathe, AJ Cole is coming in to check out the lob mistresses. Ackerman just missing that volley wide. And the bench is chirping. That's a great poach there, speed up by Alex as she comes in. She could have hit that ball 20% mm. harder, but chose not to. Yeah, she moved in so quickly, catching Barr by surprise. Oh. 
I tell you, the, the skill sets of some of these new players, they get to kind of stand on the shoulders of giants. The, the kind of women who have built this game, who possessed a lot of these fantastic reset balls in the transition zones, everyone's able to kind of learn from those and think, well, it, if it worked for them, I should probably learn that shot. Yeah, absolutely. And right on cue, you see that ball by Regina Goldberg. That is a highly advanced ball. Mm. She goes cross court over the right shoulder of Ackerman, thinking that ball's out, and it lands two, two inches in. So it's Goldberg and Trung, 11-8 up as they switch sides. This, of course, is a first to 21 game. The gentleman will be on next, followed by two sets of mixed. And if we have a tie, then we'll go to the Dream Breaker. The Dream Breaker. Everybody wants to see a Dream Breaker except the teams that are playing in it, right? They want to finish it before they get to that one. I think right now, I don't know either team has taken control of this mm. game. You see Goldberg and Trung are up by three, yeah. but it feels like this game's hanging in the balance. For sure. Let's see what happens after the break. I'd pay good money to see Jeff Warnick play singles, to be honest. <laughs> so I, I do hope it comes to that. There's uh, a lot of tickets sold to this event. So I think people <laughs> did pay good money to come see him. Matt Manassi, the uh, uh, coach to the stars out of Los Angeles. Now, those are some big yeah. backhands by Ackerman to start this off. Take a look at this. Ball comes in, she loads up, one down, and then finishes. Yeah, I see she's really kind of targeting Goldberg. Uh, but I think now, with the change of sides, the lob opportunities are going to be kind of taken away from her. So we'll see how well she adapts, changes up her tactics. Ooh. Oh, the, the net board is on the wrong side of that one, and Miami Pickleball Club men are loving it. They are indeed. <laughs> uh, Jeff Warnick, the founder of the term body bag, he has copped a lot of flack for that. That ball again moved on Trung. I think yeah. Ackerman is really starting to dial it in with that two-hand backhand. Yeah, just a couple of inches, that's all it takes. So 10-13. Yeah, I do love the, uh, the cross-court forehand dink technique of Alex Trung. It's very compact, it's got a good roll to it. it, looks like she can do it all day long. Uh, she's got a great foundation to her game. She's continually getting better year after year, even at such a young age. And they forced a timeout mm. due to her personal two-point run here. Yeah, that's a, that's a good mental win for the Miami Pickleball Club. So five points the margin. Yeah, I think we're starting to see kind of a strategy here for each team. I think for Goldberg and Trung, if they can get to the kitchen line, play consistent, um, to your point on the cross court with, with Trung and Ackerman, if they can continue to do that, they're probably going to control the mm. tempo of this game. But for Ackerman and Susanna Barr, they've got to come with force. Susanna Barr has got to, I think, take control of this game and put some pace on the ball uh, yeah. and really imprint her will. And I think for Ackerman to kind of get herself off the hot seat a little bit, start threatening the Ernie. That's a great way for uh, Franco to, sorry, Goldberg. <laughs> it's going to take a little bit of time for us to get used to uh, the transition from Franco to Goldberg. Uh, that'll it really kind of force her to think about getting the ball over to Barr. And her kind of unique style could catch Trung by surprise. That was a good pick up there from Goldberg. Yeah, you see Barr, Susanna Barr trying to take more balls there. I think that's the strategy. Um, didn't work out for him in this case, but I think they stay with that. It's going to bode well for them. Great third. Oh, just missed. Inches away. Yeah, it's the second time she's went a little too wide on the cross court ball. Um, she's got to get that to the left shoulder more of Ackerman give herself more margin. Oh, okay, so the bench has uh, initiated a challenge for the out call. It's uh, 
It did appear that it was an out ball, but. Yeah. And, and hearing straight from the Miami Pickleball team, they're saying they know the ball is out, but they want the other team to realize how hard it is to get a point against their women, and they want them to see the replay again. Unique strategy. <laughs> uh, I mean, if, if, uh, if you're not playing mind games, you're only playing half the game, right? Shout out to Brian Ashworth for recording that one. Eight yeah, years ago? <laughs> I mean, I expect this to be a quick challenge, but um, to your point, that the mental part is a strategy in itself, right? Uh, there's a lot of fans watching. Mm. There's pressure on this event to play well. Everyone knows that there's subsequent drafts that happen. There's all other talent out there. And so if you can create any more uh, leverage for yourself and your team, why not? Why not? Indeed. So the call stands, not surprisingly. Not even sure they took a look at it. <laughs> <laughs> they could have just asked us. <laughs> Here's the replay of it right here. You can see that ball is at least three, four inches out. Yep. And that's a great serve from Barr. There it is. Make it hit two errors in one point. That was a huge return by Goldberg off a great serve. I wonder if anyone can compete with the heckling from Warnick and Goldberg. And that's the one thing you don't want to do in rally scoring is give away free points off of your serve. You want to at least get the point started. For now, they've got a cushion. Uh, that's great positioning from Trung. She was there, able to take a nice low two-handed backhand volley dink. Yeah, and that's the setup that they want. It's going to prove well for them. Uh, it looks like Emily Ackerman is switching paddles. Uh, maybe saw something she didn't like. Yeah, well, let's see if this is the magic paddle. It Ooh. is. It is indeed. What a ball down the <laughs> line. Look at this as she sets it up. Yeah, that is a tough shot, made to look easy. I mean, almost no margin here on the sideline. She just straddles it at least two inches in. Uh, players now having a chat to some of the sideline players on the opposing team. I think they're asking why the referees didn't check that paddle. Oh my God. A little bit too deep by Barr there. Miami Pickleball Club, 1913. They're going to need a couple here to try to close this one out. Another great third by Trung. Oh. Uh, good deep ball there from Barr. And they've got the serve back, 14-19. Could we be at the begin beginning of a bit of a momentum shift here? Yeah, two straight errors there by Trung. Let's see if she can mentally regroup here on this next play. Uh, all right, just one point now on the Trung serve. They are now frozen at 20, must win on their serve. Let's see if they do it here. Well, it was a... Uh, a confusing ball down the middle, but both paddles got something on it. Yeah, Susanna Barr here with that power air just slaps it down the middle. Yeah, that ball just popped up way too high to the Trung forehand and got what it deserved. So another chance here to finish proceedings. Just a little bit short on that. Yeah, in these environments, right? You want to go higher than lower, right? If it's high and they're going to put it away, at least you get one more ball. Okay, I think Ackerman and Barr are really going to have to start figuring out the middle. There's been a couple of times where the paddles have clashed. That's all she it. wrote. Alex Trung decides to take out her do-it-yourself kit. Watch this. <laughs> Franco Goldberg hits the third. Trung finishes the first one and then says, let's get to the men's game. Indeed. What a good time to bring out the, her first intercept for the game. So well played. Miami Pickleball. They are on the board. 
and we will be shortly enjoying the antics of Mr. Jeff Warnick and Matt Manassi, but they certainly have their work cut out for them against Connor Garnett and Ryla DeHart. This is going to be a great matchup. We will be back to you shortly. Do not go away. This one's going to be another barn burner. We've got the men starting shortly here, Brandon. What are you looking to see in this matchup, aside from tall people doing tall things? Yeah, I, I label this as structure versus chaos. For the Chicago Slice, you've got Connor Garnett and Ryler DeHart, uh, both former tennis pro players. They're going to come in and play foundationally uh, sound movement type of pickleball, uh, although they are going to try to take opportunities to create for themselves. But for Warnick and Manassi, I think they're going to come in and try to muck this game up. They're going to try to be as chaotic as possible, um, probably throw some trick shots in there, see if they can get a lead. They'll try to push the mental edge. They're going to bring it all. It's going to be an interesting matchup. Yeah. They will make it a, uh, a real battle. <laughs> A brawl, so to speak, I think, on the sidelines. I wonder if the uh, the Goldberg and Trung sideline group will be quite as active as the, the gentlemen were when they were playing. Morgan, what do you think makes Jeff Warnick's game so tricky for opposing players? Well, it's a combination of, you know, obviously the height and reach, six foot six. Uh, the grip is the trickiest part. We, so many players have come over from tennis, Garnett and DeHart, two of the best in the game from that tennis background. Um, and they're so used to reading other tennis body language, other tennis grips. And Jeff did play tennis, and he used a very unique grip uh, in his tennis days as well. 
The man has never hit a backhand. That's the interesting part. His his paddles last twice as long as every other paddle because everything is a forehand. That was a forehand. And another forehand. Yeah, we've got a fast start here. Chicago slice a 3-0 lead. Couple drives, a uh, couple early errors by Manassi and Warnick. Garnett able to capitalize off the drive from DeHart. Uh, first shake and bake. The other thing that makes Warnick uh, so intimidating is the hand speed. Trying to find the attackable areas on his body is extremely difficult. We all got very used to attacking that kind of right shoulder, right hip. And, and that is definitely not available for him. He swats it like a fly and makes uh, a lot of people look silly. Yeah, he will shock you with his hand speed. 5-1 Chicago slice here. Great drive by DeHart. Great defense. Yeah, I think DeHart and Garnett are going to want to drop towards Manassi. Uh, I think it's going to be an easier transition into the kitchen line. The reach of Warnick is just so intimidating. Good drive by Manassi. Nice fifth. Ryler DeHart puts it down. Yeah, you're right. They're going to have to target Manassi there because Warnick can get his hand in there and create chaos yeah. when it comes to that fourth ball. I think the exception to that rule is if the serve is so good towards Warnick that he's late to the kitchen, then driving towards him can create problems for him. That, uh, that grip that he uses, that Western grip, is a kind of a double-edged sword. And if he's not in good position, it can cost him. That's great play there by Manassi. You can see part of their game plan mm. is they're going to go to Ryler DeHart and try to force him to hit backhands. He normally slides as a lefty to hit all mm. forehands. And now they got him caught on the forehand side. Yeah, he has got a the more traditional kind of continental. It's, it's getting closer to Eastern, but still quite in that uh, typical service grip you have for tennis, serve and volley. And that is going to expose him on his left side. Great defense here by Miami Pickleball Club. Uh, great finish by Garnett. Yeah, that's good complimentary stuff from Garnett and DeHart. Yeah, they're playing the percentages. Look here, he puts it away. Not too much force, just great mm. angle. Uh, again. Nice work. Yeah, Garnett's got a sound game where there's those balls where yeah, he could have hit those at 90%, but he chose more angle and mm. less pace uh, to ensure that he wins the point. And just out. Easy error. One more point, and they'll get the switch. They'll be changing sides at 11. He's got such a good two-handed backhand. Yeah, Garnett set up the combo well with the mm. down the line and then goes with the two-hand backhand, just couldn't complete it. I think he likes that play, though. Two-handed backhand is very good. It can't do everything. And uh, he was off balance, moving off the court, and still elected to pull the trigger. Yeah, a little early speed up. Listen, there's a reason why Matt Manassi is coach to the stars. Man. He knows what he's talking about when it comes to pickleball. And you can kind of see him playing the angles there. All right, so the Chicago Slice take the switch. They're up 11 points to six. Yeah, Let's see what kind of changes Warnick and Manassi are going to be able to implement. Yeah, it'll be interesting. And I wonder if Garnett and, and DeHart noticed what happened on that last point. So they actually hit a short ball to Warnick's forehand. Warnick tries to come in and get some topspin on it. But because of his grip, it's extremely hard to get under that ball. Mm. And so they're putting him in a compromised position. Uh, I wonder if they take that back and say, hey, we're going to do a little bit more of that to see if we force him to create errors. 
Yeah, that's always a great game plan for someone, uh, as you mentioned, with that kind of very unique grip. It's the low balls that tend to trouble them. So convincing them into uh, dink rallies, moving them around is usually a good strategy as opposed to testing their hand speed. Yeah, I think for Chicago Slice, they want to play fast. They want this game to get over with, get off the court. Great put away. He so, can hit some crazy angles. Oh, yeah. Yeah, with that kind of height, the uh, angles available off the court are massive. Oh, that could be the fire starter for Warnick. That's the first one he's really moved in early, disconnected, and been really menacing up for that fifth ball. Oh. A little bit too amped up there as he yeah. serves in long. Yeah, adrenaline can get the better of anyone. Oh, that is a beautiful shot. What a drop slice by Manassi. Mm. McNasty is his nickname, right? Yeah, Pickleball McNasty. Only three points the margin now. Oh, he was sitting on it. You hear the ooze from Miami Pickleball Club. They know that that's a ball Warnick loves to have. And I think DeHart realizes that's a ball he got away with. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he should try that one again. Got a quick pause as Manassi turns around to see that hmm. the scoreboard's incorrect. Uh, they got it fixed now. It's 13-9, Chicago Slice. <sighs> what a ball by well, Manassi. Oh, it's called out. I think DeHart is calling it out. So the wind is pushing that way to yep. the left, but let's take a look. Hard to tell on that ball. Yeah. Uh, I think the assistant referee did have a good look at it, so we'll trust that he made the right call. Uh, it's so often the way when you, you have an unfortunate shot that you think was great, you try to make up for it the next rally, and you kind of push the envelope a little too far. Yeah, you're right. They've got to stay in it mentally, speaking of Miami Pickleball Club. Got to keep it close. It's rally scoring. Anything can happen down the stretch. Let's see if they can start a run here down five. So a quick side out and an extra point. a few inches out. That was not much risky leave. If you've got any question about DeHart's tennis skills, watch this. As he flips that ball, oh. just barely misses it. Yeah, it's tournament out. act from the tennis studs. Yeah, he baited him into that. As DeHart hits the wider ball, Warnick takes the chance to speed it up. DeHart's like, hey, that's my forehand there. <laughs> Did you forget I'm left-handed? <laughs> Very left-handed. And Warnick, ambitious down the line. I think regardless of how good that shot was going to be in his mind, there is a two-handed backhand from Connor Garnett that is just exceptional. Agreed. Now there's another Ooh. angle put away by Warnick as he almost walked away before he hit that ball. <laughs> he knew that was done. <laughs> it was all over. And uh, that ball heading into the gallery. That was the first backhand I've ever seen from Warnick, actually using the underside of the paddle. Yeah, Garnett played it well by just staying consistent, not overdoing it. Just two points away, make that one. 
And Chicago Slice looking to lock up match number two. And that has inspired some paddles dropping to the ground. The familiar sounds of a timeout. Yeah, what makes this environment so tough is you can be playing well and then look at the scoreboard and realize you're down eight. And I think for Miami Pickleball Club, uh, while they can clean up a few errors, they feel like they're playing relatively okay. The challenge is DeHart and Garnett are playing super clean, inspired pickleball right now, and their strategy is working. Yeah, watching them hit the kind of resets they're able to do consistently, I mean, this is a team that I'd love to see in the premier level. Agreed. See if Warnick and Manassi can make their move here to avoid going down 0-2. Actually 1-1, one, one, I apologize. That is too good. Ryla DeHart closing with a big forehand through the middle. He's almost at the back of the court here as he comes in and then finishes it. Yeah, exceptional stuff from the Chicago Slice gentlemen. So we'll be back shortly. You get to watch, well, we've got a uh, pizza man coming through. <laughs> Chicago <laughs> Slice gets a win. I guess you get a Chicago Slice. Very good, I love it. Mixed doubles will be coming up shortly. You can watch the warm-up. We will take a quick break. Do not go away.
So the first mixed doubles is about to get underway. And we'll have Ryla DeHart and Emily Ackerman versus Regina Goldberg and Matt Manassi. Pivotal point for both teams here as it's 1-1 in this match overall. So now we're going to pretty much a best of three, right? First person to win, first team to win two is gonna take this matchup. All right, we're still here. So Goldberg serving to DeHart. And a whipping left-handed forehand from DeHart. And just to clarify, we will have another mixed after this. And uh, if it's tied after that, we will uh, go towards the Dream Breaker singles. Should be fun. Great defense by Ackerman. Wow. Wow. I mean, yeah. four straight balls that she gets back. And she knows that's what it's going to take to win at the highest level. Good deep serve by DeHart. Great drive. <laughs> Manassi just left it up a little too high. Yeah, and as a lefty, DeHart's forehand is always sitting there in the middle. So Manassi's going to have to play better angles there to make sure he stays away from that. Well, she played a number of wonderful lobs in the women's. Uh, she was on the other side of the court. It worked 30 minutes ago. It worked right 30 now, minutes. Probably not. Yeah. Um, we'll see if she adjusts. It's a great drive by Manasseh. Oh, and he just tipped the net on the way through. He looks like he's starting to get locked in here. Good speed up there by Goldberg. I think Ackerman really sits on that backhand as one of her favorite shots. Got exploited a little bit there. Oh, and the nugget. net is certainly in the favor of Pickleball McNasty. Listen, I've heard before, aggression is rewarded. As you see, he rolls this forehand, mm. hits the top of the net and stays in. Fortune favors the brave, folks. Oh. And Ackerman, as long as he gets that in and wins the point, <laughs> she will forgive him. All is well if it's in. <laughs> hey, he's just plucking those out of the air. I think Manassi felt like he hit a reasonable shot there. But the length and the fact that it is the lefty's forehand. It's a high-level combo that mm. DeHart just had right there. gets away with a yeah. low uh, lob. The wind really took a hold of it. I think I'll that's, yeah, we'll, we'll give her some credit on that one. credit to that. <laughs> oh, that's the first drive we've seen missed from DeHight. He's been so consistent. And I was just about to say, I've been impressed with how much he's, he's not doing, not overdoing it. He's really taking uh, just enough pace off yeah. to be consistent. But, I agree, Morgan. I think one of the ways he's doing that well is on that first drive, he's not rushing in. He's mm. maybe taking a half step and then gauging the opportunity. Oh. What a two-hand wow. backhand by Ackerman. Wow. Yeah, the Miami Pickleball Club, they had been targeting DeHart on the return of serve to keep him back one extra ball. They've mixed it up to give Ackerman the return and it has not worked out for them yeah there is one spot not to go on the court right now and it's emily <laughs> ackerman's backhand yeah it looks like she's getting more pace on her drive than uh ryla dehart was getting on his sheesh 
Oh, just barely missed it. There's an example there from DeHart. It's two drives, and he maybe moved a couple inches forward. He's playing really awesome percentages right now. Mm. Yeah, he's not just crashing in with wild abandon on every single drive. Awesome first defense by Manassi, but again, Emily Ackerman, man, I am going to her forehand all day. <laughs> not to the backhand. That fadeaway lob, it has been successful, but she may be uh, pushing her luck a little bit. Yeah, I'd like her to move away from the lob at this point. She's playing well in every other facet. No need. Mm. really got what she deserved there. Uh, sorry, she had a ball to... <laughs> she reset so well and got in there, found a ball that she could uh, really do something with. Agreed. Unfortunately, the net had other plans. He's just sitting on it. He he sees when he thinks there's an availability in the middle, and Franco Goldberg. Yeah, he never gets too rattled. He's just playing really sound right mm -hmm. there, and it, you know, and it may be hard to see at times coming through the TV, but the pace and the control that these players are playing mm -hmm. with right now at the kitchen line, um, it, it's amazing. There's a thin margin between what becomes an attackable ball and what's not. Yeah, and everyone kind of gets a feeling on the court of who's taking too much of a risk. And uh, it's usually a sign of a bit of pressure. Someone's not feeling quite so comfortable in cross-court dink exchanges. Ackerman's done it a couple of times on the lobs where she's felt like the Manassi backhand slice cross-court dink has pushed her into a tough position and her bailout maneuver has been that lob, uh, in this case, down the line. I think Miami Pickleball Club, they need Matt Manassi to be more aggressive here if they want to come back. Yeah, and that's a good example That'll work. There. Yep. I mean, you've got DeHart on the other side that's playing controlled um, and aggressive at times, but I think Manassi, he cannot play super defensive. He's got to bring the pressure. And well, on cue, but just missing that one a little long. You know, those will be in the budget as long as you're converting on most. So he's got to manage that properly. The tricky part is in typical scoring, you would definitely say in the budget, he's just lost a point. So that ball was short, but it pro probably wasn't quite low enough to do as much as he needed. Yeah, a little bit shorter budget here in rally. Huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yeah. no budget yeah. in rally scoring, <laughs> there, right? there may not be. Um, yeah, the ledger is uh, a little different. You see this miss here by Ackerman, just a little bit too low. So still a very close game. Anyone's, uh, anyone can take this. Ackerman doing a great job getting that ball very low to Manassi. has not had a lot of fortune from the net. No, I think she's cutting the last balls too close. Mm. Um, I think she's got to play it for two or three more to finish the point. Great return. Oh, amazing return. Wow. And that return won the point. That's yeah. the, uh, the flip side to the, the budget we talked about earlier. Well, I don't know if it was by luck or judgment for that particular return of serve from Goldberg, but it was remarkably short. I think she's recognized anything too deep, and Riley DeHart is having his way with that big forehand. Yeah, a little bit too soft there. I like the third by Goldberg. I'd almost rather see Manassi crash that and take his chances there, as opposed to staying back on that fifth. Yeah. 15-12, might be now or never. I 
love the way Regina Goldberg is taking over this game right now. Um, she's playing sound pickleball. She's bringing the aggression. She's a little fired up here too yeah. for a player that doesn't get too fired up. <laughs> I mean, she's, uh, she's got a family. She's got kids to feed now. I mean, that, that'll motivate you, right? Hey, a prize purse like this at MLP. Oh, yeah. You've got to do all you can. So you see that play there um, by Matt, <coughs> Matt Manassi. I like the first third, but he's got to recognize that DeHart is a lefty. So that fifth ball is going to need to maybe go down the line to mm. his backhand. Yeah, good point. A nice inside out rolling cross court forehand dink from Manassi. Just a different look. We haven't seen a lot of that from Ackerman missing a backhand slice. No. The wind kicking up a little bit here. Yeah, Manassi did a great job managing yeah. that wind gust right when the ball yeah. came. And I think as soon as he realized the ball was going to bounce to the backhand side of Ackerman, he rushed in, really applied some, some movement pressure. Oh, wow, almost. Almost got that ball back there. The margin is close. Yeah, it's, uh, it's usually been around that two-point margin. Not much in it. Still, Slice are in the lead. If I didn't know any better, they set the bait there. They wanted her to hit that two-hand backhand, and she just sprayed it. Ackerman just sprayed it a little bit long. They Miami Pickleball Club needs to capitalize right now. That's great work from DeHart, finding the width of the court. That's a tricky shot to play with a right-handed player, but... Yeah. Not sure I've heard him grunt all game, so he looks like he's getting activated here, too. Oh, so smooth. Ackerman. Wow, in I love the middle. That setup. Watch this as she strings out Manassi, then brings him in closer, and then sets up this counter. Yeah, she was there before he'd even decided to hit that shot. Oh. And she just activated her backhand. <laughs> Ryler DeHart tried to close the gap and uh, barely it, missed it. Yeah, it was a great move. They should feel good about their opportunity there. Great serve. Barely hits the back line. Big work from Manassi. Yeah, he, he's the benefactor of this one, if you see. Uh, he just had that same exchange with Ackerman 30 seconds ago, but this one he wins. Again, Emily Ackerman, she came to play. Yeah, she is really turning it on. Listen, this is where champions are made in these type of moments. 2018, Chicago Slice looking to close this out. That was a little defensive from Goldberg in the end. Just dropping the ball short, giving DeHart a good option coming forward. Yeah, and the look, Chicago Slice take I mean, that game is a three. Heck of a win by them. I thought I thought Miami Pickleball Club had a chance to steal that at the end, but Chicago Slice finished it. Perfect. So they take a 2-1 lead going into mixed doubles number two. We'll be back shortly. Do not go away. Watch these players warming up. Have fun. We'll see you shortly.
Mixed doubles is upon us. This is the second mixed in the matchup between the Chicago Slice and Miami Pickleball Club. Connor Garnett and Susanna Barr. If they can win this one, then they clinch the victory. However, if Alex Trung and Jeff Warnick take it, then we will go to the Dream Breaker. recognizing that the big man Jeff Warnick was coming in in a hurry. Yeah, it's a, I think that's a great start for both teams. Warnick's going to have to be chaotic there. Garnett and Barr going to have to play sound. And that is a sound intercept, otherwise referred to as a poach. I've just never liked that word, you know? Intercept just sounds better. Yeah, I like intercept It's, it's a well. better connotation, really. the size of that split step from Connor Garnett in the way through. <laughs> I mean, being one of the top singles players in pro pickleball and now getting to play mixed doubles with like a plus one, I'm sure it feels pretty good for mm. him. That's a pretty uh, good plus one. Yeah, <laughs> that's going to feel good from Susanna Barr. Anytime you can win a hand speed exchange, whether it's just one or two punches uh, against Jeff Warnick. Yeah, that was a good spot from Trung. And Connor Garnett 
Very early, moving towards his right, protecting Susanna Barr coming forward. Not a lot of places to go when you speed up to, to Garnett, right? Great two-hand backhand, great forehand as well. I just love the, the basics he's already got in his game. You know, six months ago, not many people had really heard his name in the game of pickleball, but how well he is resetting the balls that he needs to reset, how well he's just playing defense when it's definitely not time to attack. Uh, it's, uh, it's a polished performance so far from him. And Susanna Barr just compliments that so well. Yeah, I mean, it speaks to his ability and his talent, but it also speaks to his coach ability as well. I think we've got a timeout here by mm. Miami Pickleball Club, and it's it's a timely one as they're down 5-2. Um, Garnett and Barr seem to be hot starting this game off. Yeah, no, if they, knew, if they lose this one, it's not the end of the world, but... Uh, They'll have more matches later in the day. Yeah. They're not just going to fly to South Beach. No, they're not. It <laughs> which sounds like a great idea right now. Couldn't be too bad, would it? I think also they've challenged the call. Um, and so they're trying to see if Garnett was able to establish himself out of the kitchen when he hit the lob. Um, let's see. Probably get a replay here shortly. But let's see if we mm. can determine if he was able to get completely out of the kitchen on that overhead. While we wait for that, we see the winds picking up tremendously here. Yeah, and it is kind of swirling, so I think it's uh, a bit more risky. Yeah, here oh. it is there. It looks like he's clean, as you can see. Not a bad well, challenge his, by Miami. His push-off was, uh, was behind the line anyway. Yeah, so, so he's good. He is safe. Um, but I think the, the quality of the referees picking up this particular fault is one of the reasons why the... Uh, the lob has had such a, a surge in popularity over the last uh, year and a half, two years or so. You're right. Um, there's value in having a short lob that requires your opponent to move very quickly mm. because they're thinking about the ball overhead. Yeah. They're not thinking about their feet as much. Yeah, it's very tricky to think about both of those things. I wonder if we'll see in the future the, the technique used to play overheads in pickleball become markedly different than they are in tennis. Food for thought, people. Yeah. I think the default in pickleball is, uh, yeah, if, it can't, if you can let it bounce, you can't get it, you will. You wouldn't really do that in tennis. No. Oh, great defense. Wow. That's probably not going to work. What a point. And that ball floats wide. Wow. Amazing play from Barr and Garnett. Man, she got away with that short lob. <laughs> but watch her dig herself out of this and then force the air on the side. That's an out ball. Big backhand by Garnett. Another one. He just drifts in so well moves his body from left to right throughout the technique and that puts him in a great position to handle the most likely counter punch. Oh, it's an out ball as well. Everyone's doing it. It seems it's that way. All right? the rage these days, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and if you're struggling with your two-hand backhand, watch some tape on Connor Garnett. Wow, Troom did a great job getting that one just low enough. She must have watched the tape because that was a great reset into a low ball. Did you just text her a video? <laughs> Let's I replayed in the MLP. And a clean winner, Lob. 
She <laughs> says, look, I practiced it. She sets it up, waits, lets this ball bounce, and then just floats it over the back shoulder of Trunk. Yeah, the body language didn't really indicate that she was going to play that shot. Fantastic ball. That is huge work from Connor Garnett. I mean, Trung went toe-to-toe -to -toe on the backhands with him, but he ends up getting the final say in that. Yeah, that's the first time he's really overplayed his position that far. Uh, I'm glad he didn't pull the trigger on it, but the range of Jeff Warnick is formidable. Yeah, we talk about the adrenaline. He just had a great play before. Now he wanted to do more and a little over leveraged on that play. Yeah, we've all done it. What a reset by Trung. Oh. Wow. And the defense from Barr to stay alive and set up Garnett one more time. I mean, Warnick gets this wide speed up. But what defense by Garnett. Yeah. 10-5. Great serve. It can be tempting to try to force the changeover, right? Because Barr went in there wanting to complete that, get the side change. A little premature. So Trung and Warnick are changing positions here. Wow. Amazing. That is an awesome this is a two-handed backhand. backhand clinic. Look at this. To get a two-hand backhand on an ATP, you have to really move your feet wide, and he does. Yeah. And then still gets that ball. And there's not a massive amount of room over there. I mean, we see Riley Newman do it so well on a regular basis. Uh, but he's 6'3", long and lean. Connor Garnett is not, but he has wheels for days. And he has successfully given them a five-point lead, 11-6 with the switch. Yeah, listen, Garnett and Barr, they're rolling right now. I think they're playing really well for, for Trung and Warnick. While they're trying to come back in this game, one thing I would like to see, they made the switch on that last point, and Garnett was able to get the ATP. Maybe stick with it a couple more points to see if it's hmm. effective. Sometimes we see teams take one change, get one poor result, and then they flip back. And I don't think that does any team any justice. Yeah, right? no, you have to use the the tactical change for long enough to have some successful executions of your shots. If you if you realize you know the production of your shots are great and you're still not winning, then yes, maybe go back. It's a different strategy that's required, but uh, you can't blame that one. And it looks like they formally made the change now because mm. they've switched sides, which means they're not going to have to stack. Yeah. They do have to alert the referee. And Warnick is getting excited. Wow. I'm actually impressed that Warnick was able to speed that ball up at that low. But the challenge with it is Garnett's sitting there with the forehand. Yes. Yeah, physically able to do it. The question is, should he have done it? <laughs> and Trung, I think she realized in the last second that ball was probably floating long. A lot of wind against them. Yeah, two straight successful lobs by Susanna Barr. And a miss serve from Connor Garnett. So, a gift to give them a point and the ball back, 8-13. Will Garnett pull the trigger down the line? That's the question. Wow. Yes, he will. <laughs> Can he hear you from here? I, I Maybe he can. I mean, what a call, Morgan. As soon as you call it the next ball, watch this. The stroke looks the same and then just goes right yeah. behind Warnick. So compact, so effective with his body height management. Great control. Great play. 
Yeah. And one thing I'm shocked about is, Morgan, you mentioned this a couple games ago in this match. We have not seen any earnings. And so we don't see anyone putting pressure on those sidelines, mm. which opens up that down the line before you saw from Garnett. Yeah, exactly. I think it's such a simple thing. And for people at home, remember, you don't actually have to execute the Ernie, but you need to threaten it. You need to kind of put the fear of that in your opponent's minds. Great reset by Garnett. He's tickled that two-handed back backhand down the line. And the nets got involved and then the knee to the paddle i love garnett on that left side with the backhand he looks so comfortable uh, for trung and warnick i'm trying to hit dinks in the middle i want him using his forehand yeah i mean it's it's a rare statement you ever ever hear but certainly the forehand side may indeed be the weakness for connor garnett if there is one wow that's so good. Some crazy hands all around in this point. As you can see, Garnett and Barr stay back in the middle of the court and just continue cracking. One ball just high enough to the bar backhand. And adrenaline once again getting the better of Garnett. Morgan, Still. nothing, you know, speaking to your early, early point, Nothing shows the growth of pickleball more than don't go to that person's two-hand backhand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Five years ago, there was really no one hitting two-handed backhands, in the men's game especially. Yeah! And that's okay. probably the first time in a while you've seen a, a poor choice by Garnett. Mm. I mean, he, he's got to get that ball over. They've got leverage in that position. I think he's seen the finish line and uh, is looking to sprint through it, maybe do a victory lap. So they've just played it cleaner, really. I mean, the, some of the flashy stuff has certainly been in their favor, but the lack of unforced errors from Barr and Garnett so far has been the difference maker. Another lob by Barr. It's a great reset by Warnick. Warnick missed an opportunity yeah. to put that ball away. I think Trung is not technically happy that he let that ball go, but I think it was a product of the win, Morgan, uh, hmm. is the reason why that ball moved on them. Yeah, and I also think that that uh, two-handed backhand rolling dink volley from Garnett does have quite a lot of bite, so when it hits the ground, very tricky to kind of manage the, the grip pressure required to keep it out of his range once again. And even though Susanna Barr hasn't really done any earning so far, she does possess it. I've seen it many times. Uh, it's probably probably one of those things where two players just getting used to each other. Um, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, Major League Pickleball is, is so much fun to watch. It's, uh, it can often be chaos, people figuring out how to play with new players. Just a whole lot of fun, great atmosphere. Yeah, there's so much high-level play, the margins are so small. That's why you get a game like this where Miami Pickleball Club just has to pick it up if they want to overcome this deficit. Yeah, when Chicago Slice do get to 20, they will freeze. It'll make it a little bit more difficult for them to close it out. See, even though Warnick and Trung won that point, I'd like to see Trung straddle that sideline and maybe threaten the Ernie, to your point, uh, on Susanna Barr to put some pressure on that ball. Yeah, especially with a guy Warnick's size. He can take so much of the court. Isn't in a traditional format, uh, misses like that aren't as bad mm. as you're coming back, but in rally scoring, yep. they hurt. This is match point right here. They take this. Chicago Slice are the victors. And that is it. And a fitting way to end the matchup between the Chicago Slice and the Miami Pickleball Club. Connor Garnett flying through, through the air. Great finish by Connor Garnett. If you notice in this matchup, every game that ended, ended with a poach, or a, to your point, as an, as an intercept yep. at some point. <laughs> Um, awesome match, awesome display by both teams. Yeah, really good stuff, and we have more exciting matchups underway. The next one on this court is going to be the Utah Black Diamonds versus the Columbus. 
Morgan Evans here alongside Brandon Insekpong. And we will be back shortly with the next matchup. Do not go anywhere, folks. See you shortly.
it's what we figure out how to fill out the paperwork. What do we do to deserve this for you too?
Major League Pickleball is back for match number two in the afternoon session. It is the Columbus Pickleball Club and the Utah Black Diamonds about to do battle. The Columbus Pickleball Club, they have Milan Rain, Rebecca Ryan, Yates Johnson and CJ Klinger. Utah Black Diamonds have Michelle Esquivel, Olivia McMillan, Spencer Smith and Rob Cassidy. McMillan was serving to Ryan there. That ball floating wide. We are, of course, at the Rock and Protein Pickleball Center at Bell Bank Park, Mesa, Arizona. It's the first leg of Major League Pickleball in 2023. Yeah, great atmosphere out here. Uh, sun is shining. Players are starting to get settled in. It's a nice matchup we have here. And We'll see which ladies team starts the momentum off right uh, for their club. And the lefty coming in with some serious heat. That's Olivia McMillan and the veteran Michelle Esquivel serving to Millen Rain. I think she wins best name. I really like that. Yeah, I love the name. Um, I think as she, as she just barely misses that forehand, we're going to see a lot of fireworks in this one, this matchup. Every female on this court right now loves to speed the ball up. That's a ball I typically see Esquivel really rip through the middle. Yeah, maybe a few hours before their last match, right? So I think probably just getting settled in. Oh, a beautiful drop from Rain. Wow. And the lob down the line. It's a common theme all day, uh, yeah. especially from that left side. You see Rain with a beautiful lob over McMillan, and it works out. Great return. And it looks like it stays in. A little bit of wind helping the two-handed backhand of Ryan find the court. Yeah, you'll see a lot of misdirection from Ryan uh, in her game. She's a smart player, loves to take opportunity when it presents itself. Just a little short on that one. So the ball gets back over to Esquivel. Oh, that speed up just clips the net from rain and barely out. I have to say, uh, I, you know, I like the uniform choice by Columbus Pickleball Club. It's a great color scheme, the red and the white. Throwing a little bit of blue there and uh, the Patriots. Yeah, I can see it. I mean, I think uh, as Major League Pickleball continues to evolve and expand, you're seeing it, it materialize in the uniforms, right? Nice job there from McMillan, getting it low to the backhand side of Rain. That'll be a play that Utah Black Diamonds will want to set up repeatedly. Great reset by Ryan. Wow. You were absolutely right, Brandon. This is going to be fireworks. Yeah, you can see there a lot of back and forth there. Esquivel gets one high enough where she can say that one's not coming back. Oh. The net giveth and it taketh away. Yeah, that one actually curled back into the net off of the backspin from Esquivel's paddle. Oh, it's a fantastic strategy. <laughs> that ball looked a little wide, Ryan. Notoriously nice. Big overhead by Rain, followed by an overhead by Ryan. Amazing point, all four ladies chiming in with some wonderful stuff. And Rob Cassidy just looking for a low five. 
from Michelle Esquivel. I like this start by Utah Black Diamonds. Well, they got a 10-4 lead. Oh, and some miscommunication. Wow. That was a beautiful lob by Esquivel as it was in the middle of the court, but it's actually curving back towards rain. Uh, Ryan couldn't track it, and that ball notoriously just actually hit the net. So it's a good start here by Utah Diamonds, up yeah. seven in the changeover. Yeah, indeed. So it was Columbus Pickleball Club that won the toss, and they elected to choose to be the home side, which means when it comes down to the mixed doubles, uh, they will have the other, uh, the opponents choosing first. So they'll get to counter the choice from the Utah Black Diamond. So that's an advantage coming in to the mixed doubles. However, the flip side of that is if it does go to that dream breaker, they need to decide their lineup first, their first player, and then it uh, goes back and forth from that. So pros and cons. I have spoken to a few different players around the park, and uh, a lot of them are saying, yeah, if we get the toss, we're going to choose to have the home advantage. Those are great resets by McMillan. You know, I think while this game, you can see here on the replay as McMillan stays there back in the transition area and continues a reset. Oh, yeah, she had a great play prior to that and we've seen it all day long. So often inspiring the adrenaline to get pumping and to take an extra risk in the next play. But with this rally scoring, it can cost you. Great defense by Ryan and Rain. Ah. And good lead from the Black Diamonds. You know, one thing I'd like to see here from Columbus Pickleball Club is they need to slow down the pace. They started out trying to match pound for pound. Um, it hasn't worked to this point. But I think they should pivot and try to slow this game down a little bit. And instead, that return floats long. And suddenly, the Black Diamonds are not too far away from clinching game one. And this is where, you know, your teammates, uh, the guys that they have on the bench, Spencer Smith and, and not Spencer Smith, I apologize, uh, Johnson and Klinger are going to be important here. They've got to look at look on the court and say, hey, it's time to pivot. Let's slow this ball down. Let's change our strategy to see if we can get back in this game. Yeah. On the opposing side, the Black Diamonds have the veteran Rob Cassidy, uh, as well as Spencer Smith, who is certainly been around the block a few times, but Cassidy playing, I think this is his 14th year wow. in pickleball. So I imagine he's got the uh, the record even over the likes of uh, Simone Jardine. Wow. Great longevity. Oh, nice work. That ball was a little close. Yeah, I think that ball actually may have been wide. Let's have a little look here. Whiz just by Ryan that she didn't even have a chance to see it. Well, maybe maybe dropped in. I tend not to argue with Michelle Esquivel. Good strategy. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Wow. Amazing. What a curling two-hand backhand by Esquivel. You know, sometimes you get into a game and it, time seems like it's speeding up. Mm. I think for Columbus Pickleball, this has been a fast game, right? We're only less than 10 minutes in, and they're down 11. Wow. Oh, she's done it again. Yeah, there is, right now, what I'm seeing is so much space in the middle between Columbus Pickleball Club that uh, Millen Rain is having to really cover at the last moment just in case Esquivel decides to pull the trigger through the middle and that now means the opening is the wide ball. And Michelle Esquivel is up to the task, has been doing that for many years. Wow. Whew, and the lefty bringing the heat. McMillan says, hey look, I can play too, watch this. I'll go ahead and intercept this first ball and then I'll finish it down the line. Black Diamond's looking to run away with this as they've got a 19-5 yeah. lead. 
Yeah, that's a very early trigger from Rebecca Ryan. And well read from Escavel. That's almost the first miss I think we've seen from the Black Diamonds. Yeah, what a run. I mean, this, this, this game was, what, three to seven not too long ago. Oh, and the net on their side as well. Everything going in the favor of the Black Diamonds right now. Yeah, I'm not really seeing a strategy here from Columbus Pickleball. It looks like they're just kind of in survival mode. Yeah, it's kind of look-see-do pickleball, isn't it? And that is fantastic execution and one of the quicker games we've yeah. seen in Major League Pickleball. So it won't be long before the gentlemen take the court. Black Diamonds clinch game one. So it'll be Yates Johnson and CJ Klinger from Columbus Pickleball Club taking on Spencer Smith and Rob Cassidy. CJ Klinger, the young man on the field, 16 years of age, left-hander as well. We have an alarming amount of lefties uh, today, don't we? Yeah, we have a bunch. And for Klinger, he plays well beyond his years. Um, He's been playing pro pickleball, I think, for at least the last two years. And he seems to be getting better every week. So what you're going to see with mm. him is very fast hands. He is going to try to speed up and be opportunistic. Um, but he's not going to make a ton of errors at the kitchen line. So I'm excited to see what him and Johnson can do against the veterans, Spencer Smith and Rob Cassidy, who have a combined, what, over 15 years of experience yeah. in oh. pro pickleball? Probably closer to 20, really. Uh, CJ Klinger, he has a training partner. You may have heard of her, Simone Jajim. They live close by, and Simone often gets him to help her with her singles game when she's getting ready for a tournament, so great practice. And I think that uh, that kind of wisdom rubs off, so his game will, well, you'll see so much top spin from that left-handed forehand. I've, uh, I've played against him a number of times, just in practice games, and he has an amazing ability to shape the ball when the forehand is available. Uh, Johnson, he's one of the new waves alongside his brother, Hunter Johnson, fantastic singles players, former practice partners of the Bryan brothers in tennis. Yeah, and I think for Klinger and Johnson, it's a good microcosm of what a pro pickleball journey looks like. Uh, they have not been so much concerned with the results every single tournament. Their focus is, are they getting better? Are they continuing to challenge themselves? Are they being coachable, learning the game? Mm. And it's proven well in this last pretty much short ten or tenure for both of them to be on this type of stage at this moment. Yeah, both fantastic athletes. Uh, we will more than likely see them stack to keep CJ Klinger, uh, who's on the far side of the court, on the right-hand side, as is tradition for the lefties. And then look, on the other side with Spencer Smith and Rob Cassidy, in Smith we've got probably one of the most consistent male players on the tour. You know, I can put mm. him up there with the likes of Colin Johns with resets. Mm. And then you've got Rob Cassidy who at one point people felt like had the fastest hands maybe in pro in all of pro pickleball. Yeah. Uh, he's got a bunch of spots that you just don't want to speed the ball up to or you're not going to see it again. Yeah. And what's amazed me about Rob Cassidy is he's not one of those guys who you know decided after year seven or eight that that was it he found a, a second lease on life uh, during the pandemic I think like a lot of players did you know realizing that there's a bit of a halt on tournaments right now it's time to actually work on the game and uh, with that break from tournaments giving you an option giving you the opportunity to really focus on some of the physical aspects of the game knowing that your body's going to have plenty of time to recover before tournaments come back up um, and for some players techniques different techniques that you can't often do when you're constantly worrying about the tournament coming up yeah i agree um, there was a lot of opportunity during the, those pandemic years right and the players that took that opportunity to get better and learn a lot of them are here today in this weekend yeah for me i came up with a serve and then kind of left it at that 
<laughs> and then they stole it. Morgan Evans, man, a legend in this <laughs> game. Even if you don't know him, you know about him. <laughs> yeah, very few Australians. I'm certainly in the top five Aussies. <laughs> What's your prediction on this matchup? Who do you think can probably take take this game? Uh, look, if it was singles, ooh, it's a you pick em. Um, I think given that it is doubles, uh, my money is on Cassidy and Smith. Personally, I think the experience uh, and the hand speed of Cassidy in front of Johnson. I think Johnson is going to get a lot of pressure from Smith in the cross-court backhand dinks, and I think he's going to pull the trigger, try his luck with Rob Cassidy. Well, that's why we play the game. I love it. Well, Cassidy's setting the tone early. He's going to get up there. He is the bravest man in pickleball. I, I don't think there's any question. Yeah, I'll be surprised if he's yeah. not on the ground at least once in this game. Yeah. The equivalent on the female side of the game is, of course, Elise Jones has made a name for herself being just a fantastic defender, a never-say-die athlete. Yeah, those are the ones, Morgan, you talked about as we started this game that Johnson's going to have to control. Speeding up, trying to take opportunities across from Cassidy is a dangerous yeah. game to play. Yeah, and I'm not sure if he's actually played much against Cassidy at all, so he would have watched the footage. But until you until you feel it firsthand, where you've taken a ball and you're 100% convinced this is a great ball to attack, and you hit it at near light speed and it comes back even faster. Uh, it's it's a very disconcerting feeling. Yeah, yeah you see it right there. And what's yep. tough is even the balls that you feel like you should win on, he still has a chance. Um, yeah. so you've got to play angles. You've got to play the right pace. Yeah, he'll routinely just drop down on one, tee, uh, one knee when someone has an overhead. And it's a remarkable how often he gets it back. Uh, that's a great play by Klinger as he slowed down the pace a little bit. So the Diamonds have doubled up. Columbus, 2-4 is the score. Great defense by Johnson there. Oh, good ball there. Cassidy was moving at the time of contact. That does make it a little more tricky. Yeah, got away with one, but you know, still maybe a dangerous game to play there. Hey, Klinger cleaning up that middle ball beautifully. That's where I think they can have a ton of success is you know that you know Johnson's very good in singles. If he can have that big drive and then Klinger's left hand come in there, they're gonna have some success. some great things by Johnson. Mm. Yeah, I think that ball was a little too low. The wind possibly helping as well. That's one of the more tougher shots to come in a game and learn, right? And oh, yeah. pickleball, that backhand flip. It's what's made Ben Johns entirely successful as one of his favorite shots. Yeah, I think Johnson did a good job holding that paddle position just long enough, froze Cassidy, couldn't quite get enough purchase on that first counter-attack. Oh, and a freebie for Johnson. Yeah, this is a pivotal moment, I think, yeah. for Columbus Pickleball. They've taken the lead. Great drive by Klinger. Oh, beautiful dink from Johnson. That is a veteran dink. Yeah, I love the way you switched up from the slice and then the two-hand topspin dink. Mm. Klinger was there, but Cassidy got it low enough. 
usually better to drive at the person coming up to the net, not the one that's standing. Yeah. So I think if that goes to Smith, probably have a better chance of finishing that point. Spencer Smith was wandering through that shot there. Made it very tricky to uh, do something meaningful in the reset department. Wow. And Cassidy, oh, oh just oh, missed it. Johnson has called it wide. Yeah, it was and, a great uh, job by Klinger. And referee Ron Ponder has corrected Yates Johnson, giving the point to the Black Diamonds. <laughs> it might have looked available. Yeah, it was, it was a pretty cool shot by Johnson. Yeah. Uh, just wasn't the right time into yeah. the wrong place. I think he might have been watching a lot of Connor Garnett <laughs> earlier on and thought, well, if he can do it, I should do it. <laughs> nice work. For me, I think the path of least resistance for the team, uh, the Black Diamond team right now, is going to be more in the dink warfare, really setting things up and looking to see if Johnson will pull an early trigger oh <laughs> Cassidy just braving it yeah one thing Johnson does not lack is power as you can see he speeds up this first one and then that overhead to be mm. tough to get those back yeah, good volley again I don't like the strategy of driving from the baseline to Cassidy's back here no Cassidy likes it yeah, I agree. <laughs> As they say. Oh, oh Cassidy oh, thought wow. it was all over. Cassidy <laughs> thought the play was <laughs> over. Klinger said, wait a minute, wait I'm a minute. still here. That, did you not see? I'm tall, fast, <laughs> young, and left-handed. I, I, you know, that was in the sheets. <laughs> oh, good setup from Klinger. Great setup. But it is the Diamonds that get the switch, albeit by the slimmest of margins, 11-10. If they manage to take this one, they just need one of the mixed doubles rubbers, and uh, that'll be it. Yeah, it seems like both teams are still settling in here. No one's really taking advantage. Uh, but I think the strategy for Utah Black Diamonds as the way they're playing now it's probably going to bode well for them down the stretch. Uh, they're playing as clean pickleball as possible. They're trying to counter as much. Uh, and to me, C Columbus pickleball is sort of playing into their hands with it. I think they're going to have to take some chances maybe from the baseline before they get to the kitchen. Yeah, right now it is kind of a punches versus counter punches experience, and the counters are uh, doing well. And for me, I like the black diamond get up. You know, I, I would wear that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's the common theme all day. I, yeah. I'm loving the uniforms that MLP, I think it yeah. shows the investment of the owners. Good logos. Into these clubs, how much they care. Yeah. Uh, and want to present themselves well. So it's Spencer Smith serving to Yates Johnson. That's nah, not a third shot error we typically see from Smith. So they are tied at 11. Yeah, it's a deep return there by Smith. We talk about a rally score and you don't want to mm -hmm. give away those free points. Um, let's see if they can overcome that here as they're down one. Great patience here. Well, it was until it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I love the first flip by Klinger. Uh, the issue is it's into Rob Cassidy's forehead. Yeah, I mean, you got to know thy enemy, right? I mean, he's, he's going to be left-handed all day long. So we think. <laughs> Oh, we had a good look, and I think it was there. 
Yeah, what I'd love to see, what I'd love to see Klinger doing is start to counterbalance with his other hand. When you see some of the shots from Johnson reaching into the kitchen and getting good pace, he's moving, he's kicking back with his leg, and he's using his other hand to counterbalance. Klinger is not doing quite the same kind of job. Yeah, that is. I mean, that's a great breakdown. You better be careful, Morgan. You're going to get a bunch of DMs for lessons no. <laughs> giving away gems like that. No. Wow. Yeah, if you're out there thinking about, uh, you know, booking a private lesson, just know that, you know, I love you, but I am <laughs> most likely unavailable. <laughs> Brandon, though, where, where can they find you? Let's throw you under the bus, shall we? Uh, Austin, maybe? <laughs> hey, happy to be here at MLP. <laughs> uh, we've got a great event as... Columbus Pickleball down one, trying to see if they can come back here. I really love the movement of Johnson. He just sort of floats around the court, doesn't he? Very smooth. Oh, lovely. Yeah, loose wrist. You can tell someone who really moves well based on how, how loose they can allow their wrist to be when it gets close to contact. If you've got enough time over the ball, you can relax for a moment as opposed to always feeling like you're reacting to your opponents. Oh, that's gorgeous. Wow, what a ball. What a ball. Yeah, they're I cooking mean, with gas now. You can see Johnson is starting to fill it and possibly take over this game. I think, you know, if they use Klinger on the side, that's mm. kind of the Ernie guy, get Johnson more involved. As you yeah. see here, three straight points. Yeah, it's beautiful. I think one thing that's happening is Johnson is getting comfortable moving around his backhand and playing that nice, loose, inside-out forehand dink because he realizes Klinger is long enough and is going to cover the middle well that he doesn't necessarily need to be cramping the center. Yeah, that's a good point. If you, know, if you have that righty-lefty combo, mm. you actually have a little bit more room to take chances because you've got two forehands there. That's just science. Oh, what a ball by Smith. <laughs> That's an experienced yeah, ball right yeah. there. Yeah, Klinger thought perhaps it was going long, just caught him in the lower back. Yeah. Placement over power, folks. Mm. It's a great ball by Smith. <sighs> that was an out ball. Klinger played it. I think when it comes down the stretch, they will give Klinger a lot of balls. The young blood, and they will test to see whether or not he can handle the pressure. Smith is starting to fill it here too as you, he's taking some chances mm. and on cue it's a great time out there by Columbus Pickleball as they're down two we get closer to the end of this game. <laughs> I love the pep talks from Rob Cassidy, legendary. Yeah, he's one of the most fiery competitors in all of pro pickleball. Yeah. Um, incredibly nice guy off the court and on the court generally, unless, unless uh, you, you hook him on a line call and then, well, watch out. Like a honey badger, <laughs> like a honey badger. Yeah, definitely has his heart on his sleeve. <laughs> yeah, but he's, he's, he became a household name because of it, and I think uh, I wouldn't want him to change that. Yeah, one thing I'd like to see here is for Columbus Pickleball, I'd like to see them, if they do go out here in this game, on their own sword, play aggressive, um, don't get tentative here, especially for Klinger. And take your chances to see what happens. Oh. 19. 18 is the score. Hang on. We're just getting that right. Yeah, 18 16. 18 16. Players just confirming with referee Ron Ponder. Klinger with the Ernie. And a good lead from Johnson. You mentioned that earlier, that Johnson can come over and take more balls because Klinger's forehand is there. It looked like there was some open space, but Cassidy didn't take it because of the threat of how long Klinger is. Mm. What a that's ball a big by point. Smith. Yeah, Johnson anticipated just a cross-court dink, had already started moving early. Uh, that's a good lesson for people at home. Let's try to stay home. Don't prepare for what you think is going to happen. Prepare for what could happen. Yeah. Uh, and 
and Smith, a good controlled attack. I mean, you can see the experience taken over from Smith. He knows where to put the ball to put himself in the best position. He's starting to execute really well. Yeah, and this is game point. Well, I'm glad we got you know Cassidy on the ground at least once. It's not really a match unless he's uh, found the ground at least once. Yeah, we can actually play ball now here at 18-20. Yeah. Both teams are frozen. <laughs> Have to get points on their own serve. Oh, uh, bit of a swing and a miss. Just caught the edge, perhaps. So another match point, game point. Excuse me. Quick side out there. No damage done on both sides. Wow. Oh, oh. <laughs> some aerobatic. Yeah. Clinger did really well Smith. on that first ball off the net, um, but Smith just put it. The, this is a crazy angle right there. Did I say aerobatic? Acrobatic. Excuse me, folks. Something sounded wrong with that. Lefty versus lefty. And he's just missed it. Yeah, I think Michelle Escavel just uh, reinforcing to Rob Cassidy that did indeed look good to her. And uh, she's talking about Cassidy or the ball. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, we'll leave that one alone. <laughs> Possibly both. <laughs> That's great patient, disciplined work from the Black Diamonds. They waited long enough to get the right ball to attack on, didn't take any crazy risks. Yeah, That's and I think good patience work. at the kitchen line favors Utah Black Diamonds. Mm. Columbus Pickleball, they're gonna have to make things happen. Great drop from Cassidy. Oh, and he got away with it. We just yeah. talked about the patience. He pulled the trigger on a low backhand, and yet he is rewarded. So the Black Diamonds, go up 2-0 coming into the mixed doubles so the home team the columbus pickleball club they will choose their lineup second the diamonds will have to choose first and columbus will get to counter that so we will uh, just briefly step away from the mics as the refs and the players organize their lineup and we we'll back shortly here with the major league pickleball
playing, Johnson. Real good. Really? I thought so. You baited me several times. Yeah. Since. Uh, I was like spraying that one now. I think it was the wind. <laughs> it felt really good. It was, it was really close. Y'all ready? You got me. Y'all ready? All right, let's go. Yeah, but it took three when I finally got you, you know? Yeah. Play is uh, just about to get underway. It's going to be Spencer Smith from the Black Diamonds alongside Michelle Esquivel taking on Millen Rain and CJ Klinger. If they take this game, that is the match for the Black Diamonds. Yeah, normally in tournaments we've seen uh, tournaments outside of MLP, we've seen Rob Cassidy play with Michelle Esquivel. Um, strategic change during this MLP event where they actually have Spencer Smith playing with Michelle Esquivel uh, for the Utah Black Diamonds. And on the other side, Klinger and Rain. Yeah, I think there's less chance they'll fight over the middle ball. Tough start there for Rain. I think they're going to need to dial it in quick because Utah Diamonds are looking to finish this match. And another beautiful drop from Esquivel. I think they've made their intentions known pretty quickly. Ooh, that had around the post wow. written all over it, but instead she elects to go for that uh, really kind of hooking two-handed backhand cross-court dink. It's a beautiful shot. Yeah, watch here. She baited the ATP and then brings mm. it back around. Veteran move from Esquivel. Yeah, that was a timely point there by Columbus Pickleball. I, I'd almost want to see a timeout if it went to 4-0, 5-0 mm. this early. And CJ Klinger, he knows he's going to have to really bring the heat, be active, be strong in the middle, and not be afraid of the Esquivel two-handed backhand. Yeah, we talk about using your link. Um, Klinger, over six feet tall, he's got to be huge at the kitchen line and imposing uh, for a Columbus pickleball team. You know what? I've never talked about using my length. Um, <laughs> five foot nine. I uh, haven't once used it. So I, I use my speed sometimes. Uh, I use my long flowing hair. That's usually it. No, we've all got different talents. Right? Morgan. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I'm sure you've used your length. What are you, like 6'2"? <laughs> On a bad day. On a bad day? Really? Oh, my God. Oh, look wow. at that. That was adorable. What a point. And Klinger decided he was going to go full Tarzan <laughs> for the entire point. And, uh, well, <laughs> he looked good for a while, didn't he? Yeah, threw in a nice trick shot in there. It looks cool for the highlight reel. Ends up not winning the point. Um, yeah. It's 4-4. Four, four. Um, they're in striking distance. Oh. Klinger looking towards Rebecca Ryan to see if it was a, uh, a worthwhile challenge. The teammates and the coach, and the team leader, can help out with the, uh, the challenge calls. A lot of things the players can challenge. Great drop by Klinger. Yeah, he's really doing well, isn't he? Oh, 
great. And so, Millen making it rain. Well, so look, this time rain actually baited Esquivel. She goes to the middle, forces her to go wide. Yeah. ATP. I think Smith was looking to take the paddle out of there and a little late. Oh, Klinger starting to get real active right here. And he's going to need to if they want to win this match. Yeah, so far his third shot drops have looked incredibly good. Oh, wow. wow as soon as I say that, <laughs> Millen Rain with one of the greatest drops you'll ever see. What a slice <laughs> drop in the corner. Very impressive. Mm. Esquivel did a good job of really making a, a good adaptation to her previous volley that floated long. Uh, and Millen Rain. Risky ball to go down the line to Spencer Smith. But yeah. I mean, because it was so risky, he didn't see it. <laughs> exactly. One of those full circles, full circle shots. It's uh, so bad that it's suddenly good because <laughs> no one expects it. Another great drop by Klinger. That's uh, Millen Rain just uh, about to call it out. Yeah. <laughs> well, in, in her defense, it did bounce out just <laughs> after it hit Klinger's knee. <laughs> As you can see here, Smith with the nice angled put away. I like that strategy, though, for Columbus Pickleball to Spencer Smith's backhand, which feeds into Klinger's forehand. Yeah, good complimentary stuff. Oh, she's got it. I do not even believe that was there. Rain and has upped her level yeah. in this game. Wow. I mean, take a look at this replay. This is the second ATP that she's made yeah. from Esquivel. And Spencer Smith isn't defending it, not because he's not a great defender. He very much is. But he doesn't think that the angle is possible. And Rain is proving him wrong time again. Is it going to happen? Oh, just long. Yeah, a little unlucky, but I love her confidence level right now. Mm. Uh, they're going to need that to come out on top of this game to save this match. Oh, he's tried to be cute again. Oh, and it burned him. Oh, yeah. That's tough. I think uh, I'm going to look for the bench to kind of rein him in a little bit. If a ball's that high and you've got players on the other side with the kind of wheels that Spencer Smith and Michelle Esquivel have, that's not the time to be cute. Yeah, there's a time and a place for drop shots. Uh, yeah, it's recreational play on a, on a Sunday morning. We talk about Rain's confidence level. Mm -hmm. uh, she is keeping them in this game so far as they go to the changeover up to 11 to 9. Yeah, they're in the driver's seat. And it'll be the Black Diamonds that need to make a couple of corrections. Yeah, and to your point earlier, Klinger with the drop shot while you see both of the opponents on the baseline. Uh, what, it, you know, while it feels great to do it, at the pro level, there's so many great stellar athletes, right, that can mm. make it from the baseline to the kitchen in half a second. So yeah. if you can continue to put pressure on your opponents, um, do that. Now, if you see them on their back foot after they've hit a ball and you can take an opportunity to drop it, that may be a good chance. But for more, more often than not, pushing them back further and further is going to bode well for you. Yeah, 100%. It is the, the higher percentage play. Uh, and it's something that Klinger, you know, he's young, 16 years old. He's uh, experimenting, being creative with his shot selections. He sees, you know, players like Jay de Villiers doing it routinely. Well, Jay has been doing it, you know, since he was a child. Um, Drop shot since he was a child? He's French. Oh it's, it's mostly what they do. <laughs> I love it. 
All right, Columbus Pickball, they have to stay aggressive. I mean, that is the number one thing. Um, listen, you're, you're gonna, you lose the match if you lose this game. And so last thing you wanna do is go to the bench afterwards and, and feel like you didn't give it your all. Yeah. Wow. That's too good. Right on cue. Yeah, that, that first punch got uh, something high from Esquivel. And then a follow-up two-handed backhand. Too good. I mean, make it rain, let it rain. How many? <laughs> There's a lot. There's a lot we can work with. Oh, fantastic pickup from Excavel. That's a great finish by Esquivel there. Can we take a moment and just understand how clean pickleball Spencer Smith plays? Uh, making smart choices, the right decisions, and it sets up Esquivel for a put away. Yeah, no, he's exactly that. He's made a name for himself being rock solid, a very consistent player. Oh, went for it. Well, you know, as soon as I said that, um, yeah, I'm going to take the hit for that one. That was my bad, Spence. You know, it took That's a chance. It looked like it was there. <laughs> and Smith starting to feel it. It's great speed up by Rain. Utah Diamonds just came on top of that rally, though. Oh, he saw the opening. It was definitely there. Yeah, and one of the reasons he pushed that long is you've got Klinger's two-hand backhand, so he wanted to get the ball past that. It was such a good move from Klinger. It was a fantastic return. Yeah. Rain dropped a ball and gave Klinger the opportunity. Yeah, that's one he's got to make there in this situation. A good punch volley there from Klinger. Just catching Esquivel on her back feet. Klinger moving all the way, going sideline to sideline, and unfortunately unable to make that two-handed, uh, sorry, that single-handed backhand. experience there again. I, I do like the speed up by Klinger, but there was a subtle thing that Spencer Smith did. He slid to his left. Yeah, just a little bit, and he's got a grip that allows him to protect that kind of right chest area. A superb lob. Wow. And Millen Rain, she's showing a, a full spectrum of shots here today. She is playing high-level pickleball yeah. right now. Two points, the margin. Yeah, uh, Smith, beautiful single-handed backhand. Yeah, I think the danger that's looming for Columbus pickleball is as this game continues to get closer, uh, the pressure is going to mount. Yeah, they have the youth, which in some ways is an advantage, but the experience uh, on this side is fairly formidable. I think Michelle Esquivel has won more tournaments than most people have played games. Great defense. Wow, it's a great in and out ball by Ray. One thing I do want to see is which bench is going to put their imprint on this particular game. We've seen both benches be particularly quiet in, yeah. this, in this last few points here. 
Yeah, very few bottles thrown. Um, it, the timeout is being called by the Black Diamonds, so they'll have a little bit of a chat. Yeah, there's been one proven commodity that mm. has changed momentum in MLP, and it's energy, right? And so the team that comes with the most energy, we talked about the margins being slim because these are all high-level pro players. Mm. Uh, that energy is sometimes a deciding factor. Yeah, it's, it's the X factor. It's the invisible player on the court. Which players and... Often the owners, the the team captains, the the team lead, you know, it can be a number of people that really bring the heat, bring the energy to the players on the court, and it does. It makes such a good difference. That's one of the reasons why MLP has become such a hit. So it'll be CJ Klinger bringing us back into proceedings at 15-18, 18-15, excuse me. That's uh, gone too far. Looks like Esquivel is wasn't enjoying the heads-up battle with Millen Rain. Decided instead to test out Klinger. Great patience by Klinger on that point. So they got a chance here. Just needed to get uh, a little lower for that one. Yeah, I think that's the ball that she normally will want to come in and attack. The problem is Klinger put that pretty low. Sometimes you just got to concede when your opponent hits a good shot and reset. Mm. What a return that by was, Esquivel. That is absolutely clutch. I'm not sh quite sure if she was aiming for the sideline. Wow. But uh, regardless, she found an incredible spot. 17-20. So they'll have a chance. Great pace there by Rain. I like that overall point uh, by Columbus Pickleball team. Let's see if they can close it out here. Wow. Points. Those were two oh. awesome dinks at the end there by Spencer Smith. One here to cut it, force the high ball, and then flips it cross court. Yeah, Columbus played a good measured pickleball point there, but didn't come away with it. So two points. Make that one. Yeah, we talk about the experience of Smith. He does it again here as Klinger actually slid to his left thinking that ball was coming and went back to his backhand. Oh. So with another chance to clinch the victory, CJ Klinger serving to Michelle Esquivel, but instead they've decided to have a little bit of a chat about it. I'd like uh, to see if they can't orchestrate the point, really build something that perhaps changes the reads of the uh, the Black Diamonds. Yeah, I like it. It's a good offensive timeout. Uh, listen, you've got a chance here to win this game on your serve to keep this match alive. What you want is Utah Black Diamonds overthinking this next play. Uh, but I'll say that the experience on the Utah Black Diamonds team, you can't rely on that. You're still going to have to come out and play a really good point against them. Uh, be patient, take the right opportunities, and see if you can come out on top. Yeah, the uh, the wind is kind of squirling, so it's not like it's going to hold things back if you really want to be aggressive with that first punch volley. Yeah, I'd like to see an aggressive return here by Esquivel to really set up this point. Um, that'll really tell me a lot yeah. about what this rally is going to have. I'm curious to see if CJ Klinger will bring the heat on the serve. He's got massive amounts of topspin on it. Quite a unique Western grip. 
does. It's not bad. Great reset by Esquivel. Wow. Oh. And that's it. And they got the benefit of the net at the end of that point. But listen, great game overall. Klinger and Rain played awesome to be able to come out on top. And we've got more pickleball in this matchup. Yeah, the reward for all of us is another mixed doubles matchup. So taking the court will be Yates Johnson and Rebecca Ryan for Columbus. Yeah, against Rob Cassidy and Olivia McMillan. And I think for... Two lefties? Yeah, two lefties on the court. And that's oh. probably part of their strategy, right, on why they put the two of them out there. It's not often you see a mixed team that is two lefties on the court. Yeah. Yeah, this is going to be... Very interesting. Let's see which lefty gets to play which side. Of course, uh, you know, if you turn your, just your TV upside down, it'll look like normal pickleball <laughs> again. Or just move to Australia, where it's, it's all upside down. Yeah, you so. go to the options button, you click invert, <laughs> and what will happen is it'll flip for you. Um, you've got four energetic players getting ready to take the court now. Uh, and we talk about how energy is so important. It'll be interesting to see who starts off fast with it. I think for Utah Black Diamonds, I'm curious to see if they're feeling the pressure a little bit, right? They wanted to close out that match on this last game. Uh, they allowed Klinger and Rain to dictate most of it, and now they're having to play a fourth game. Are they going to come out aggressive or tentative? Uh, I would want them to come out all cylinders firing. And, well, Rob Cassidy knows no other way, so I think we'll see it. Yates Johnson, I think we're going to see a, a lot of third shot drives from him. I think he'll work hard to try to attract that third shot and see if he can't apply the pressure and possibly get up there and knock off the next one himself. Yeah, I think this, this game is going to be somewhat dependent on the play of Becky Ryan. I think for, for Cassidy, he's going to try to put a ton of pressure on her and she's going to have to be careful speeding up towards Cassidy's backhand mm. as much as possible. Yeah, and that's, that's a, a tricky proposition. When you're in front of someone that largely just seems unattackable, you feel like you now are pigeonholed into one-shot selection. Well, I should I just dink cross-court all day. Can I beat this person in cross-court dinks? And if the answer to that is a maybe, um, well, it's a, it's a very difficult way to play the game. The other options are, of course, look towards a lob of some kind to try to alleviate the pressure that way. Dink down the line and then hop the line. Show, the, uh, show your opponent that you can perform the Ernie. That gets you off the hot seat. A lot of different ways, but uh, none of them are particularly easy. Yeah, and folks at home, it, if you haven't made it out to an MLP event to watch these players play live, I suggest you do so um, because you're going to be able to see the pace, the angles that are that are hit. Um, you're going to be able to see the athleticism up close. And all of those factors play a big role in who takes these games. And if you're anywhere in Arizona, come on out to the Rockin' Protein Pickleball Center at Bell Bank Park. Just a stone's throw from Phoenix. Yeah, come by to the commentator booth, say hi to you know, one of the celebrities in our game, Morgan Evans. Oh, I thought you were talking about Mitch, and the <laughs> producer here. <laughs> and his plus one today. <laughs> <also>. <laughs> Brandon Insect Pong, one of the great players in the game. And I'm a little surprised you're not out there strutting your stuff. Are you, are you injured or something? Listen, it will happen. Um, I think for me, just continuing to practice and get better at my game and be ready for those opportunities. So happy to see who all is here. Good. His it's phone. Exciting. His phone is still working. Uh, team owners, commissioners. He's long, lean, far too good looking. <laughs> and uh, but I can understand why you want him on the mic.
Yeah, just what you talked about there. They're, lo they're looking to uh, apply some real pressure towards Rebecca Ryan. Yeah, you can see there, I mean, we just started the game and that's already four or five balls that have gone directly to Ryan. Um, look for her to stem the tide here though. Yeah, the question is how is she gonna do it or is Johnson gonna have to cover that far? Yeah, see, uh, to your point, I actually don't like that play. It forced Johnson to come all the way over. Mm. I think you got to give her time to settle in to see yeah. if it's if she can correct it, right? Yeah, two points. Give her the benefit of the doubt. Uh, we saw in the first match, Milan Rain made two errors in the first two points, and then played fantastically well. So. It's what? something where you, where you gotta trust. I agree, and what a combo there by Cassidy. As you can see, Johnson over leverage. Cassidy goes to the backhand and sets the combo. And that lefty hooking down low to the backhand side of Yates Johnson. I mean, I'd like to see an early timeout we, you know, you've got to get some confidence back here for Rebecca Ryan if you're going to come out on top here. Uh, that's good work. Johnson getting a nice, easy, high put away ball from McMillan. Nothing helps the confidence more than getting on the board, right? Well, it's uh, something every man has done at one point or another. Come all the way over and uh, not gotten anything out of it. <laughs> all you can really do is say sorry. And, and make up for it. <laughs> yeah, he made up for it there. But you know what? What Utah Black Diamonds can't do is beat themselves, right? I think if they play a steady game here, they're going to be in good position. That's a good speed up there by Johnson. Yeah, he holds his paddle just behind the contact for so long. You could easily believe he's just going to dink the ball. Oh, that was certainly an out ball. And uh, Johnson made Ryan aware of it, but not quite in time. Yeah, it looked like it was curving back into Ryan's back end. She just got caught there. Oh, that was available too. On the rise, a little risky, but still they're feeling it. Yeah, those are the ones I don't want to see from Cassidy and McMillan. And conversely, that's what we don't want to see from Columbus Pickleball, right? If you're Frank Johnson, if you're going to come over, that ball has to go over or at least cross court to reset that point. Great return by Ryan. Good move, getting in there early. Yeah, the whole, the rally scoring aspect to this game, it changes the the complexion of what it means to drive a third ball. You know, that, especially when there's a little bit of breeze around, uh, anyone who's good enough at leaving those out balls, you've suddenly not just wasted an opportunity on serve, but you've given away at a point. So I think the pressure means we're seeing a lot of kind of 75% drives today. And a good leave now from Ryan. Yeah, great leave there. And you're right, those drives are so important here. Um, they're, they're just a third shot drop, and those third mm. shots have to go in or you're gonna lose a point in this format. Great drive. Yeah, it's a beautiful drive. It's got a lot of shape on it. Yeah, and but check I, the margin out on that drive, right? At least yeah. a foot over the net. Yeah, well, at least, but still certainly dropping in. Oh, look at that. What a ball. Oh, that was Johnson. gorgeous. Cassidy. Oh, Cassidy. Robert Cassidy. Your parents could very well be watching. 
I mean, he moved well. I, I, he give moved him, very well. He was, was there before the ball got there. Lightning fast. Just didn't know what to do with it at that moment. Yeah. Well, so both the gentlemen on the court um, enjoying some some creative shot selections. Yeah, um, two things I'd like to yeah. see here. So one for Black Diamonds, I'd like their corner to say, hey, look, uh, Cassidy, I love the aggression that you have, but one thing we don't want to do is be so aggressive that we're giving them points uh, before we can actually get things rolling and get started. And I think for uh, Columbus Pickleball, they've got to understand that, look, you're good enough to win this game, right? The only thing that's going to derail you from doing that are those errors at the baseline, right? So do not do that. Find a way to get to the net, stay calm, play the longer point, and you're going to have a good chance. You should really be their coach, I think. Maybe I should just say it louder, and yeah, then we if can you just, all, yeah. yeah, exactly. Just <laughs> get out there, give them your two cents. Yeah. I'll, I'll man the booth. Yeah. It's always easier to say it here from the booth, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Backseat drivers, yeah, they're right. the best drivers in the world. <laughs> make a left and make a right, that's it. It's, it's as easy. simple as that. <laughs> Stop taking just right turns. You're going around in circles. That's right. how it works. Who needs maps? I know where we're going. 11-7. 11-7, seven. McMillan serving to Johnson. And oh, we've got the first Wusa from Rob Cassidy. That's when you know he means business. Well, trading hours are over, so maybe not that kind of business. Yeah, taking a look at his paddle there. <sighs> wow, well, two that's two in a row. Can he get three? <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Everything happened in that point. Three straight net balls, and then it ends with a scorpion yeah. by Johnson. That was hurting cats on a pickleball court. Wow. Yeah, McMillan is late to the kitchen after those returns. Wow. <laughs> Yates has a come at me bro look on his face, and yeah. rightly so. That was a wonderful counterattack from Rob Cassidy. I mean, listen, this is the way that Yates Johnson's going to need to play. They want to win this game. Play aggressive, let it all out. Yeah, yeah and take your chances, you know. And I think you know, Becky Ryan is, is good enough to handle the pace that comes. And so you want to create as many opportunities for your team as possible. It is a beautiful drop, and she's really feeding off the backhand slice of Yates Johnson. You know, when you come over from tennis especially, you feel very comfortable with the chip and charge, forehand and backhand slice. And it's not often you realize that you might, in fact, be playing into your opponent's hands, giving them free topspin to work with. Uh, that was a little wide. Great play. Yeah, I noticed something. I, I'd like to see for Black Diamonds, I'd like to see them allow Olivia McMillan to really put more of an imprint on this game. She's played solid. She's taken the right chances. And I think that strategy for them is going to allow them to come out on top of this game. Yeah, no, for sure. She's a great player. Um, and I think for Cassidy, it's not often he gets to be alongside a fellow lefty. He's used to, you know, having his role just on the right-hand side, and he's, he's doing it very well. Um, but usually he's got a right-handed player who's going to be slicing cross-court um, backhand to backhand. And McMillan has a different look with that shot. Yeah, creating chaos on the court while playing mixed doubles is... It is a great strategy until you start giving up freebies, right? Until yeah. you're the one that's making errors, and that's the fine line that you straddle at this level when you're playing a great opponent. Yeah, and with rally scoring, you know, that risk versus reward, it's a different kind of animal given that you can lose points on serve now. Oh, oh my gosh! Beautiful, you what talked about imprint. <laughs> Watch this ball here by Olivia McMillan uh, as Yates Johnson thinks he's going to have a high one. Yeah, That's a winner. It's a dink winner. So it's a byproduct of Johnson having to feel like he needs to cover that much of the center. Cassidy trying to do the same ball right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's just takes from, a from the wrong side of the court attempting to do it. Yeah. 
McMillan, I, that stamp you talked about. Olivia McMillan right now is playing a near perfect game. They need to get on her shoulders right now and have her carry them to a victory. <laughs> Big good, serve. Yeah, good deep serve. Nice work from Rob Cassidy. I mean, McMillan hasn't made an error in the last, what, 10 minutes maybe? So this is... Be careful, man. This is when you jinx them. <laughs> I'm uh, testing the waters no, on this they, they, commentator they, jinx. They, they get mad at you after the game. <laughs> That lob is long, and that's a sign of the kind of pressure. It was one of those lobs that, well, we've, we've kind of run out of ideas, and this is the best we can come up with. But a little bit of breeze that uh, didn't help their cause. What defense by Cassidy. Oh, oh, Cassidy. <laughs> it's that ball in. He'll find the kitchen line. Great defense by Columbus Pickleball. Oh, Yates fires a rocket. That would have gone through the computer screen back here in the commentary booth. Very glad. I mean, if this ball hits Cassidy, I think we might have an injury. Need an well, alternate to show up possibly. There'll be, um, there'll be some words. We'll just put it that way. <laughs> Instead, we have match point here. Game and match point. Wow, and the McMillan show actually takes a commercial break now. She is, <laughs> she is finally cooling off. <laughs> yeah, played fantastically well all day. And Yates Johnson, he has gone from missed lob to missed bullet to another missed bullet. It's a sign of uh, pressure, tension. Black Diamonds have to be careful here not to take the bait on a uh, highlight mm. reel winner, right? Just, yeah. just win it the right way. Oh, or that way. Or, or that way. A netball. <laughs> I mean, take a look at this drop by Cassidy. Not much you can do. The net give it, the net take yeah. it the way. That's a quote from Morgan Evans. <laughs> wow. Yeah, well done, Black Diamonds. That clinches the victory for them over the Columbus Pickleball Club. Columbus did play well, they had their moments. The first mixed doubles game was wonderful for them. Great matchup all way round. We are not done for the day though, but uh, we will be taking a break until four o'clock mountain time. So until then, Morgan Evans here al alongside Brans Branson. <laughs> Branson. He could be a Branson. Could um, be a Branson. <laughs> Brandon Insectpong will be back shortly. Do not go away. It's been a pleasure.
All right, we are back here for some more Major League Pickleball. This is the Challenger level event, and we're about to get underway with the AZ Drive versus the Dallas Pickleball Club. That means Sarah Burr, Sarah Ansbury, Wes Burrows, and Andrea Silstrom are going to be taking on Krista Gecheva, Megan Fudge, Chuck Taylor, and Brandon French. As is tradition, ladies first. Sarah Burr and Sarah Ansbury. They are warming up on the right-hand side of the court. The lefty close to us. Australian maid, Sarah Burr. I'm going to wish her luck just because, you know. Uh, she's teaming up with the veteran Sarah Ansbury. Ansbury has been around the game almost nine years now. And, uh, well, she's done it all, really. Her reputation speaks for itself. And I think she's got a really good uh, team leadership role for the AZ Drive. Megan Fudge and Krista Gacheva. A couple of relative newcomers to the game. How do you feel about the chances here, Brandon? Yeah, you're right. We've got a couple of newcomers, one on each team that'll be playing in this matchup. And then you've got a uh, legacy person in Sarah Ansbury, who has notably a ton of medals in this pro pickleball game. Um, women usually start started off here in MLP, and I think you know, it's kind of a common theme all day. They've got to bring the energy and the momentum uh, to really will their team to a victory in this match. So I'll be interested to watch this one closely and kind of analyze what's happening here. Yeah, very much so. I think uh, I've watched a fair amount of footage from Krista Gecheva and super fast on the court, great skills, quality, good clean contact. And uh, you know, just moves really well. I think Megan Fudge brings a lot to the table. Um, I'm curious who's going to be keen to dink cross court with Sarah Ansbury. She's such a such a good quality, consistent player. She's built a, a career on consistency, reset, being able to stay patient in cross court dink rallies. Um, hasn't always counterpunched as much as I think a lot of other players, but I think in recent times she's kind of realized that the game has really taken on a much more aggressive complexion and her game has, uh, has followed suit. So I'll be very impressed to see her really counterpunching well. Sarah Burr, yeah. the young Australian, she's come over, she's embraced professional pickleball. Loves to just grip it and rip it, you know. Yeah, and that's, uh, hey, it's it's a good strategy when it works. If there's times to dial it back, I look for the experience of somebody like Ansbury to really be the sounding board mm -hmm. for this team uh, to lead the way in what kind of strategy they should have. And, you know, one other thing to mention is and Ansbury's been around this game for and pro pickleball for a while. A lot of these players watched her coming up, right? They watched her training videos. They saw her winning tournaments. And so you, you'll see some remnants of Sarah Ansbury's game and how these ladies play. Mm. And on top of that, you'll see their own style uh, and their own imprint on this as well. So I'm looking forward to this matchup all around. We've got a great guys matchup to follow this one with Brandon French, Chuck Taylor against Wes Burroughs and Andre Seelstrom. So this entire match is going to be fun. Um, both teams are, I, I believe this is their last match uh, of the day in yep. group play. And so they're really looking to make a statement. Yeah, everyone's trying to get through group play. Uh, it's still hard to tell exactly who's going to be able to make it through to the quarters and semis. Um, get Jeva. you see her warming up the serve. Plenty of good top spin there. Yeah, she's got the, uh, it looks like the carbon one paddle. Um, possibly the one X and you've got Megan Fudge playing with Gamma, Sarah Ansbury playing with Gamma as well. And we've got an engage paddle over there from Sarah Burr. So Sarah 2.0 on the other side. <laughs> yeah, Ansbury, the one thing she hasn't done with her game is adopt the two handed backhand that you see so many other players doing. She has got a, a fantastic slice, single handed backhand. Uh, her lean in volley dinks are legendary. Um, but patient discipline has been the name of the game for her. And I think Kacheva and Fudge may, uh, may indeed try to bully their way through this match. Yeah, one advantage for DC Pickleball Club is they've got probably one of the best minds in all of pickleball as their coach uh, and Dave Fleming on the sideline. So 
you know, look for him to kind of shift strategies as needed, guide this team, hopefully to a victory on their end. Yeah, that's uh, Dallas Pickleball Club. I'm looking forward to seeing Andreas Silstrom though. Uh, I've watched him a couple of times. Six foot nine, you will not miss him on the court. He is an absolute presence, former ATP professional tennis player, uh, as well as his partner Wes Burrows, both former tennis professionals. Yeah, looking forward to watching him live. He had some great success uh, last uh, last couple weekends in APP tournaments playing with Joey Farias mm. and a couple highlights if you've seen them on social media as well so he is not to be taken lightly I know there were a few people that were surprised uh, when he was taken in, in, in MLP because they haven't seen him or weren't familiar with his game um, hopefully from what you've seen in the last two <laughs> weeks is yes. there's a reason why this guy is here playing and I expect him to kind of show that and continue to improve uh, this weekend here. Yeah, no, he's phenomenal, fantastic hands. Um, and for the size he is, soft touch. That's that's kind of amazing, really. I've seen him sort of gently meander towards the kitchen line and be able to cool off balls, uh, similar to Matt Wright, really, often just diving the paddle underneath the ball, caressing it, and getting the job done up at the kitchen with quick hands and amazing, amazing power. So we're underway. Great backhand by Fudge. Yeah, already serious power. Sarah Burr trying her luck down the line. Let's see if she continues the trend. Yeah, nice put away from Ansbury. Yeah, anything high through the middle um, is gonna be what Sarah Ansbury's looking for. She'll be able to put those balls away routinely. And Burr using the net well. A little aggression rewarded there on the on the drive. We're still in the filling out process in this matchup. Oh, that's an oh. awesome return. Yeah, beautiful chip and charge. Chip and charge, I like that. Chip and charge. 2-2 Two -two is the score. Rock solid from Ansbury, just getting behind Fudge. That was a heavy backhand from Gechtiva, so it was a good job by Burr to be able to block that, and Ansbury finished the deal. Oh, <laughs> she's mishit it perfectly enough. It certainly came out high, but uh, not enough shtick to actually go out. So 4-2, Burr and Ansbury. Wow. It appeared to be a very low lob that was rewarded. Yeah, Ansbury got away with the high third. Ketchava just couldn't connect. Yeah. Good leave on that one. Smart yeah. lead by Getcheva right there. Yeah, very very hasty, I think, from Burr. I'd love to see her set up the points a little bit, possibly dink down the lines if they can't get uh, Fudge to dink cross court with Ansbury. Oh, beautiful take from Ansbury. Yeah, that's a good ball. She snuck over there, didn't she? Yeah, she's almost playing like a mixed double setup where she's going to look for any opportunity on that side and take advantage of it. Great dig by Ansbury. Mm. Wow. Okay, so good defense from Burr. Kept him alive in the point, and Ansbury picked her moment to precision. Yeah, I think Fudge had a chance to put that ball away. She elected to go a little bit conservative, and 
it actually paid off for a Arizona Drive. Yeah, that will cost her. That's the first missed drive, though, the Burr has had. So 5-7. What oh, a ball. Oh, oh. Wow. Watch this from Getcheva as she sets it up. That She's is a pro move here. Wow. Had Ansbury leaning to her right. Uh, she's already noticed how much of the middle Ansbury's looking to take. And Getcheva will keep her honest. Yeah, all it takes is one, you know, getting beat on the backside one time for the other player to respect it is why it's so important to do. Oh, that's a good ball. Yeah, that is a great ball. Yeah. She's got great length with that, uh, well, obviously her forehand. I feel like we haven't seen a single match so far that didn't have a left-hander on the court. Yeah, I agree, they're starting to that's become amazing. more prevalent yeah. in pro pickleball. Yeah, I mean, we, we saw what kind of advantage that Rafa Nadal held in tennis playing left-handed, even though he was a, a natural right-hander. Uncle Tony said, we're better off you being left-handed. Um, I'm sure that was fun for childhood. I love that setup by Getcheva. She had a great backhand, and then not only did she dink that cross court, but she put side spin on it. Mm, made it very awkward contact for Burr. Again. Couple of miss hits. And Burr gets it down with a, a tricky single-handed backhand. There. Yeah, it was a good ball, and I think that's where Getchva could get in trouble with that side spin slice. Uh, she's got to make sure she keeps that ball down. So 9-9, nine, nine, no one uh, really putting a stamp on this one just yet. And Fudge is pleased with that inside-out cross-court forehand. So 10-9 to the Dallas Pickleball Club. And a good last second leave, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a good. Hey, hey that's, uh, you know, 30, 40% of the game is letting out balls go. Bird did a great job there. And Ansbury feeling like she had a better shot at it. Yeah, a little over leverage there. Um, we are at 11 10. Dallas Pickleball Club is up by one. We're headed to the changeover. Neither team has really grabbed a hold of this game yet. Um, I, I'd like to see Megan Fudge take control from the Dallas Pickleball Club side. I think she is trying to fill this game out, playing a little conservative, and while the game is tight, mm. she's gonna need to take control if they wanna try to separate here from Arizona Drive. Yeah, I'll be very curious if the AZ Drive team are gonna try to target her on the return of serve to keep her back one extra ball. Uh, but both Getcheva and Fudge doing a great job of moving the ball around well. And uh, I think early on they, they really made a point of making sure that Sarah Ansbury wasn't gonna be able to crowd the middle quite as much as she wanted. Um, early on, we saw Ansbury reaching in, taking a couple of balls and doing real damage with it. And since then, the Dallas Football Club, <laughs> Dallas Football Club, <laughs> Dallas Pickleball Club have, uh, have fed enough to the backhand side to make sure she's not uh, going to be crowding middle. Listen, man, my Dallas Cowboys are out of the playoffs, so I really don't appreciate you bringing them up, but hey, <laughs> it happens. Yeah, no worries. We're one of my favorite ice hockey teams, those Dallas people. Very good. We've got some great teams. Jazz jokes. <laughs> I like their name more than most of the NFL teams. Dallas Cowboys, it's got a good ring to it. It does. Wow. 
Just a little too soft from Getcheva there. Uh, I, you know, I don't think there's any threat if that ball's a little bit higher because Fudge has really quick hands, I mean, fast hands. So hmm. she's got to make sure that ball's over. Nice work from Ansbury. Disconnecting a little early, allowing Burr to take that first one. Oh, just missed. It is quite a flat kind of slapping forehand from Burr. Yeah, second time that she's gone wide uh, on that forehand ball. Interestingly enough, she actually puts a fair amount of topspin on the return of serve, and yet the third shot drive seems to be quite flat, typically the other way around. Uh, it's, a, it's a big mm. serve by yep. Ansbury that forced the deep return by Fudge. So two points the margin. Great entry by Burr. Mm. Just miss. I think there was an opportunity for Burr to go down the line. Fudge looked like she was cheating over to the center quite early. Yeah, I agree. I don't know if she just got tentative at the end or because Fudge was in the area, she got a little bit nervous on it, but that's those are chances to your point, Morgan, that she's got to take. Yeah, you, you kind of always have to prove to your heads up opponent that they need to fear you and they need to stay close enough to their sideline to protect their backhand. Uh, what is typically the backhand anyway. Oh, and uh, Ansbury calls it long. Fudge asking the referees both said they saw that just a little bit long. Okay. Well, sometimes my eyes deceive me. Hey, listen, we're on the sidelines here. Oh, what a serve by Burr. She took the pace off of it, yeah. added some spin, and that ball just died. I think that might be the first ace we've seen today. Fudge wants a timeout to talk things over. Another Australian just acing people out there. Oh, that's great. Makes you feel pretty good, doesn't right? it? Right? Yeah, it's in the jeans somewhere. I don't know. I think, uh, we, you know, we talked about it on the changeover. You know, Fudge just missed uh, a volley a little bit long a few seconds ago. And I think for her, she's got to go aggressive in this matchup. Um, if you're going to miss those balls long, wide, be imposing. Uh, they're not going to they're not going to do well here if she's going to be conservative alongside yeah. Getchema. For sure. I mean, especially that that first volley, the fourth ball, you know, that's not a different mindset to the normal scoring. What is different is the amount of pace that people are trying to put on third shot drives. That's a, a slight difference in terms of the mindset going all in on so many third shot drives. You know, the risk of just losing a point straight away is very real. But you're right, those kinds of volleys need to come with some serious stick. Yeah, and that one right there from Fudge had a little bit more pace. Now, mm. Getcheva really started it, but hey, that's the aggression they're going to need to play with here. Ansbury. Oh, and <laughs> she's getting excited. Look at that, fantastic work. Just clean living there from Sarah Ansbury. Good defense from Burr. That's a great ball there yeah. by Fudge. Just, she, yeah. She's the product of a high ball there and uses the angle with that overhead slice. And the net's not loving them, unfortunately. So 19-15, just two points away here. They will, of course, freeze when they get to 20 and will have to win the point on serve. And they'll get to that point now. Uh, a routine return error from Fudge. Yeah, I'd like to see a timeout here by Dallas Pickleball Club, but looks like they're not electing to take one. 
Yeah. Oh, fantastic pickup. Wow. Oh, and one of the first two-handed backhands I've seen for Mansbury. Yeah, it looks like she's been in the lab. I think uh, Dallas Pickleball Club got away with one by not having a timeout, but mm. we'll see if they can string together a couple here. And handcuffed Krista Gecheva. That was a great placement there by Ansbury. So, for game one, Sarah Burr serving to Krista Gacheva. Wow, that ball just stayed in. Yep. Has she got it? Oh, just a little bit long from Burr. She's asking and the official to confirm. Well, no, you're actually asking a teammate, Wes Burrows. Uh, you can do that, and they can help you decide whether or not to choose to challenge the call. Uh, I think it's a fun rule. Oh, it's a good play by Getcheva. She hasn't really attempted to go behind Ansbury since, you know, the first half of this game. Yeah, she did it once in the first section with a really crafty dink. But since then, hasn't happened much. Yeah, just too many high balls. And the ball now on the paddle of the young Australian, Sarah Burr, for the win. Wow, what a ball by Getcheva. <laughs> Some serious authority on that two-handed backhand. If there's a spot maybe not to hit to her, it'd be right here, as you see on your screen. She just cracks that ball down the middle. I think that's still in. What a wow. point. Fantastic. Arizona drive. Scrappy defense, <laughs> I'll call it that. I think uh, everybody thought that ball would be out initially, yeah. and it just curves in. Burr tried to reset, yeah. wasn't able to. Will that be the moment it all changes? Oh, just overreached as she was drifting to her left. Yeah, I think she was deciding between a backhand mm. flick and a slice and just mm. got caught in the middle. 18-20 is the score. Both sides frozen, having to win the point on serve only. Placement over power once again for Ansbury, just precision work. Yeah, and that's the strategy that Arizona Drive is looking for. String them out wide, get a middle ball, let Ansbury finish. And she has it. That's a big moment. Well played, ladies. So, easy drive. Take game one. Burr and Ansbury over Gecheva and Fudge. Nice work, ladies. So, the gentlemen will take the court. They will see them starting to warm up. Wes Burrows and Andreas Seelstrom versus Chuck Taylor and Brandon French. This one, ooh, it's a real you pick him for me. I've seen Taylor play some unbelievable pickleball in the last year or so. He's one of those players who has been a veteran. Uh, I think I remember him coming on the tour about seven, eight years ago, and he was great. We always knew he had real potential. Um, but he was one of those players, similar to Rob Cassidy was talking about earlier on, that during COVID, he took his game to a whole new level. Um, the area he lives in up in Utah, he now has a lot of fantastic players around him and the kind of training he's got, the kind of repetitions he's able to, to have on a weekly basis has made such a difference. No, I agree. Um, you know, there's a lot of players that they say are overrated, right, or underrated. I think for Chuck Taylor, he's just rated. Like, he is as good as you think he is. Um, this guy has been steady. He has really good results in pro tournaments. Um, so, I, you know, I expect to see him playing well here. And, you know, his partner in crime on the other side of the net, Brandon French, is no stranger to playing well also. He's got a gold medal with Riley Newman. He's got some 
you know, pretty good exhibition games at the at the highest level. And oh, by the way, from the mental perspective, he's one of the best trash talkers in the game, and mm -hmm. that matters. <laughs> well, good. I'll be curious to uh, to hear some of his best work out there today if we get to see it. The X Factor for me is going to be the big man. Andreas Silström, the Swede, the professional tennis player, played on the Davis Cup for Sweden. Uh, six foot nine, the reach for days. If anyone can lob this man, I think they should get a check. 41 years old though, so he is the elder on the court. Not in pickleball years though, he's still new to the game. Picked it up in 2021. And uh, in recent times, he's really started to make a name for himself. You'd be absolutely shocked to see the hand speed of this gentleman. And yeah, he's, he's partnered up with Wes Burroughs. Yeah, with Wes Burroughs. And, you know, you mentioned it. He's one of, you know, the wave of former tennis players, um, even current tennis players, pro tennis players, that are coming over to pickleball and trying to make a name for themselves. You know, they feel like they can be one of the best in the game. Yeah. No, look, I mean, if you think about just how difficult it is to make it to a, a level of tennis whereby you're making money, a lot of people don't realize the in professional tennis, it's really only the top 70, 75 uh, men that are actually making a living playing the game. Uh, about 20, 25 females. That's not a lot given the grand scheme of things and just how many professional players there are. In pickleball, that number is rapidly expanding and they're having so much fun doing it. So, you know, it uh, really speaks to just how and why so many players are thinking about coming into this game. And I think in five years time, well, it's gonna be, have a very different complexion. Yeah, I, you know, one of, for me, one of the comparisons that I have with professional pickleball, a lot of people talk about professional golf. Uh, one of the things I say is, is NASCAR. You look at the amount of sponsorships and opportunities that you're able to get at NASCAR, that's really what makes up for the financial perspective for those drivers. Sure, they're going to drive in tournaments and try to win prize money, um, but a lot of it is about branding themselves and making money there. Uh, it's similar here in pro pickleball where there's so much piece of the pie mm. that all these players can be successful in clinics and lessons and branding yeah. uh, aside exactly. from being the top player. For sure, the opportunities are just growing by the day and we now have an opportunity for AZ Drive to extend their lead if they can take down Chuck Taylor and Brandon French. So it's French serving to Seelstrom followed by a forehand drive that sounds a little long. One thing I saw last week from Brandon French was a very sneaky uh, attack off the bounce on the forehand side. So I'd like to see, well, I'm happy to see him on the right side and Wes Burroughs is going to have to be very careful about anything on the forehand side of French. Yeah, French can play the angles like no other. So I'm looking forward. You saw one there as he went wide with the ball. Oh, look at that dipping ball from Seelstrom. Oh, smooth hands from French. Yeah, all these players have really good hands. You see here as Silstrom decides to attack a decent spot for Brandon French, but he backs up and easily blocks it in the corner. Great dig by oh. French. Oh, West Burroughs with a smart side winding ball through the middle. Very cool, calm and collected as as he always is, really. It's very hard to rattle Wes Burrows. He often used to play alongside uh, the big man. Who am I thinking? Oh, I'm drawing a blank here. We saw him early on. There's that forehand attack.
Uh, steals from just tags Chuck Taylor. Yeah, Jeff Warnick is who I was talking <laughs> I was trying to It's a great ball to by Sealstrom right there. Is his speed ups and dinks have the same swing motion. So it really helps mm. for the deception. Steelstrom, he put his paddle out there. Burrows had a good look at it. How are the wings, mate? You enjoying those wings? These wings are awesome. Uh, you got to get out here live <laughs> to taste them. That was great defense by French to keep him in that position. But Silstrom, man, the length that he has at the kitchen line, seeing it up close is insane. Yeah, I think if you're French and Taylor, you've got to be thinking about how you can just use precise dinks against Silstrom and move him around enough, hope he pulls that first trigger. That was a sneaky ball there from Wes Burrows. I haven't seen him change his grip that dramatically. That was a great ball. To your point, they're going to have to move Sealstrom around. If they allow him to just stand there and dictate, they could be in trouble here. Yeah, Burrows has very precise drives. I think they should look to really target Sealstrom when he's in that transition zone. That is kind of one of the, if not the last skill set that comes into a budding professional player. It's a very tricky shot to play. Uh, that was a great low speed up by mm. Sealstrom there, but you're right. As you see French there, not happy with the result. They've got to attack Sealstrom in the transition area. Make him take as many steps as possible before he gets to the kitchen line. Burrows, uh, that's one of the one of the rare drive misses you're going to see from him. So five seven is the score. And he's followed up that with a return error. So far, we've seen a quiet Brandon French. Uh, be interested to see if they string together a couple. If he starts chirping a little bit. Mm. Well, we had three loose errors in a, in a row from the AZ drive. And then one from French gives them the ball back. So 7-8, a quick change of events. Okay, Burrows feeding beautifully off that from Sealstrom. Yeah, great play. As you see, he comes here to intercept that third ball. Great job of staying down. Two missed drives. I really shouldn't have said how wonderful his drives were, right? Yeah, those matter here. I think, you know, I don't want him to move completely away from it, but he's got to give it a three or four more inches. Yeah, they are using the Franklin ball. It doesn't travel quite as fast as the Jira 40. Good leave, good eyes, good communication. So 11-8, the AZ drive, take the switch. Yeah, what do you think, Dallas Pickleball Club down three here, what do you think's happening in their uh, team huddle? Well, uh, yeah, I think they're gonna want to slow things down. Uh, that's obviously easier said than done. I think for them, their best chance of success is turning it into more deliberate dink exchanges and methodical approach. Uh, I believe returning to Wes Burroughs right now. Sealstrom is not exactly disconnecting early and trying to get in and intercept that next ball. Burroughs has made a handful of mistakes on his drive. So if they can deal with his drive when it goes over, get enough pace on it, then at least we keep him back an extra one and force them into a dink rally where you move Sealstrom around the court and uh, see if we can't pick on him in the dink realm. But that's just me, you know.
This is nice, but it was the wrong player. Yeah, opposite side as uh, Taylor just misses that dink wide. They started out with your strategy, right? They returned to West Burroughs, yeah. but got into the dink rally cross court yeah. on the wrong side. And look, and obviously trying to get the ball to bounce in front of Andreas Seelstrom is not easy. French standing very tall there. Yeah, one of the best ways to block a ball is stay as still as possible, but uh, in this one, he kind of took that one overboard, right? <laughs> yes. Yes, that was AJ Cola levels of still. Some great resets by oh. Burrow. Wow. Chuck Taylor hit us some beautiful shots, but Burrow, wow. he, he got himself out of trouble there. 14-8 now. I'd like to see some energy from the Dallas Pickleball Club bench right now. Yeah, couldn't hurt. You know, energy can win a match. And uh, a team event like this, uh, nothing exemplifies that very principle better than MLP. Well, that ball just wide. Just wide from French, not much. Yeah, and also when you hit a lull against a team, one of the ways to figure out how to beat them, I think, for Dallas Pickleball Club is your point earlier, they've got to dink the ball around unattackable over and mm -hmm. over and slowly find some openings. So right now, I think they're rushing just a little bit, and it's playing into AZ Drive's hands. Mm. Yeah, the thing about pickleball is when you get out there, you often realize you've got really only got two choices. You either play to your strengths or you play to your opponent's weaknesses. Very rarely do those two things actually uh, coincide with each other. And the Dallas Pickleball Club are trying to play to their strengths, but it's not exactly playing to the weaknesses of the AZ drive. Yeah, um, all wide and... I think AZ Drive this entire game has not felt any pressure. Uh, so if, yeah, if Dallas loose. Pickleball Club can at least put a little pressure here with the two three-point run, I'd be interested to see how Arizona Drive reacts. Oh, that is a beautiful drive from uh, Chuck Taylor. Wow. Yeah, it was indeed going out, but Taylor, once again, couldn't get out of the way. Yeah, I like that setup from there where they switched. They got Brandon French mm -hmm. on the left side and Chuck Taylor on the right side. Hey, look, if it's not working, find a different strategy. They don't switch on this one, though. And Morgan, we mentioned this before, as you see Burroughs really attack the net off of this drive, that when you change your strategy, you've got to give some time to let it breathe. Yeah. You can find out if it's the strategy at fault or the execution of the strategy. Uh, it's a wonderful attack from French. Very unique. Really kind of flips the paddle around, gives it a, a pancake approach. So they're still alive, 12-18, and that helps. Yeah, it's one thing you can't do if you're Arizona Drive right now is give them any free points. Great drop by Taylor. Oh, that's what a great Ernie. Yeah, that's, uh, that's great work from Taylor. Just one dink to Burroughs before he redirected over to Silstrom and then applied the pressure with the Ernie. French closing very well. Barros unable to handle that shot. Yeah, it's great defense by French. You talk about survival versus taking your opportunity. He survived as long as he could and then was really opportunistic towards the end. This is more like it. What a ball by Seelstrom. Wow. Okay, well, I didn't know he could do that. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that ball looked like it was going a little bit wide. He curves mm. it back in, playing with a carbon two paddle. Yeah, so now just two points away from clinching game two, and the big man gets involved. Isn't it, isn't it funny how one great point just ignites a yeah. player? 
and then one step to his left, and, wow. he, and he's covered <laughs> covered the court. He was almost in the stands. <laughs> And it was floating long, but Taylor, once again, he's been caught three times in this game, and that does give the game to AZ Drive. So they are now just one game away from clinching the victory. We'll find out fairly shortly who the initial mixed doubles pairings will be. So, guys, we will take a quick break from the microphones. You are more than welcome to stick around. Uh, we'll be back yeah, I'd say it's a minute or two at most before the uh, action begins. Morgan Evans here alongside Brandon Insekpong. We'll be back. Don't go away. So it'll be Wes Burrows and Sarah Ansbury taking the court in the first and possibly only mixed match if they do win this one. They're taking on Chuck Taylor and Megan Fudge. Fudge yeah. serving first. Dallas Pickleball Club, they, they've got to show up in this game right here. If not, they are going home on the day losing this match. Yeah, it's all or nothing. Yeah, good disciplined attacks 
There was one that came off Ansbury that looked like it may have given the opportunity for Dallas to take up position at the kitchen, but it was not to be. Um, Fudge, beneficiary of the net there. I, I, I like to start from both teams. I'm seeing some bounce, some you know, pep in the step for Dallas Pickleball Club and Arizona Driver starting out on fire. Great dig by Fudge. Uh, good movement sliding to the left from Burrows to open up space on the forehand side. I'm intrigued with this technique change he's uh, implemented on his backhand side. I, I'm seeing him switch his grip over to eastern backhand and really punch almost uh, the same kind of pancake grip you see from uh, some of the more creative players. Great ball by Chuck Taylor as he put a lot of pace on that. Ansbury tried to block it, it just sailed wide. Oh, oh, he would love to get that one back. He can't really ask for more out of a backhand. I mean, that might be one of his favorite shots all time. Mm. Backhand cross court, uh, just missed it. That's going to cost you whether you're using side out scoring or, or rally scoring. There's uh, not much we can do for that one. So 5 2, off to a good start again. The AZ drive. Yeah. I, I don't like that speed up there no. by Ansbury. As there was no one home in the middle. Yeah, that's, that's very ambitious. Oh, and a lob serve. Oh, wow. <laughs> Followed by a drive that catches the net. Well, great dreams setup. do come true there, hey, folks. A great setup by Chuck Taylor. <laughs> if you ask him, he'll say that's how he drew it up. Perfect. Oh, what oh. a great Ernie by Ansbury. Yeah. I mean, it, it came out quite delicate in the end, but I mean, it was perfectly placed. Watch that. As soon as Chuck Taylor turns his head, she comes with the backhand Ernie, finishes the point. Yeah. No, she, I mean, she really is the epitome of, as I said it before, precision over power. It's, uh, it's the kind of style that you would want to teach to a lot of players out there, as opposed to, well, just fly through the air. Just do what Tyler Loom does. It's tough to teach that. It's a great Ernie there by Chuck Taylor. He loves jumping that left side corner and then pushing that backhand cross court as you see it here. And it's just tough to get back. Referees just having a quick chat. Yeah, your point about Ansbury playing a really foundational and sound game. Uh, you know, a lot of players can get carried away as they get into pickleball. They want to hit the cool, the flashy shots that they're seeing. Uh, but really starting out the way that Ansbury plays, which is foundational, and then layering shots mm. on top of that, it's probably one of the best ways to get into pro pickleball. Yeah, start from the ground up. Well, once again, the net is favoring the Dallas Pickleball Club. Yeah, Fudge and Taylor are content with staying back there and just throwing out firefights. It's working right now. Oh, a little late to the party. Yeah, maybe a half second late there. I think uh, it's good aggression by him, but got to choose those shots wisely. Nice. Again, just 75% down to the feet of Megan Fudge, and Ansbury gets the job done. Great power from Fudge. Looks like she's, she's determined to up the ante a little more in this mixed match than she was in the women's. I, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing some extra power from her. 
Ooh, and Chuck Taylor. You know, I noticed this uh, in one of the early tournaments of actually last year when he was playing a, a PPA event. Um, and, oh. Wow. He has been punished by the pickleball gods for spinning the <laughs> ball out of his hand. Uh, <laughs> He didn't realize he was doing it. I, I talked to him after, yeah, it was early on when the PPA had deciding, decided no pre-spin whatsoever, and he was kind of unaware that he was doing it, and I'm sure that was the case there. Yeah, it's, that's, it's uh, in his head, though. I mean, that's an interesting exchange there, as you see Arizona Drive up 11-7 on the changeover, but to see Chuck Taylor call for spin on his serve, uh, especially a serve that he's been using for quite some time now, and then directly afterwards mm. serve it, what, at least two to three feet out, which yeah. he hasn't done all day. No. Uh, it's tough to say that that's not partially in his head there. Yeah, that's a mental a mental break there, and uh, it trickled on to the next point as well. Um, y you know, for me, if, it, if at all something has bothered you, whether it be something from the sideline or a weird call or some shenanigans, doesn't matter what it is. Call yourself a, a timeout. Just regather yourself and uh, don't let one mistake be compounded by two or three others, which is what's happened there. And it's given the AZ Drive a four point advantage. Yeah, and I uh, completely agree. And, you know, there's times where your teammates have to save you from yourself. Mm. And that's where they can call the timeout, seeing that there's a couple errors. Uh, they, they benefited from the change over here. So let's see what they talked about and if it's effective. Ansbury got away with that one. It's uh, they, they look like a, a ball relatively low to her forehand, something that typically just see her reset, move up to the kitchen line methodically. But she's playing very aggressively, and I think Wes Burrows is feeding off it beautifully. Yeah, that's a good call, and how timely is that, uh, Morgan, <laughs> as he comes in and <laughs> intercepts that ball. And you're right, one of the things you see at the pro level is even when a bad shot works, they usually know not to do that again. Yes, yeah, for sure. You give yourself that feedback. You don't have to lose the point to know that, yeah, that was risky. Tuck Taylor, another Ernie, but he's missed it. Yeah, and if I didn't know any better, I'd say they're almost baiting him to hit that ball. Mm. It's the second time he's missed one. Yeah, I mean, you talked about it before, the kind of energy right now on the side of the Dallas Pickleball Club. It's just... They need to believe they can win this one, you know, and it's uh, it's so often the case. They will wait till this point's finished. Oh, that's a great ball by yeah. Ansbury. Yeah. Cross court. shot He's by Wesley <laughs> Burrows. <laughs> the sneaky wow. rungan. Uh, he drifted around the backhand side, found a way to flip the forehand through the middle. And that's the first and only time we've seen him do that today. Therefore, unpredictable. How comfortable do you have to be to be able to hit that shot in an MLP match? Yeah, it's like pulling yourself out of a 360 ice storm slide and having a sip of coffee at the same time. Yeah, and you mentioned energy. While uh, Arizona Drive are up by eight, I'd like to see their team go crazy on a shot like that. Yeah. is a methodical point by Dallas Pickleball Club as they make their way from the baseline all the way up to the net and force the air. Let's see if that momentum carries on. That's trickled on nicely to that beautiful forehand drive from Chuck Taylor. Yeah, I often say it, the, uh, the script of the match usually follows the internal monologue of the losing team. And you've got to change that monologue. You've got to be the one that believes that you can just get one point here and there, get close, get close enough to apply some pressure, and then you never know.
Has Chuck overplayed? No, he's safe. Yeah, got himself back in position there. Hansberry threatened to Ernie, and then Burroughs took a chance. He did. Well below the net, and uh, I think they need to stop the bleeding. Yeah, I mean, we talked about not having really a budget here in rally scoring, mm. and while they're still up five, I'd like to see a timeout if they don't get this point. Well, there's certainly wow. a change in energy on cue, too. Wouldn't you? I mean, they must be listening. Yeah, what'd you say about the internal monologue of the yeah, losing they're, uh, team at the Yeah, they're moment? changing it. They're trying to make a happy ending. Great dig by Fudge. Wow. Burrows. Uh, he's missed it. It was certainly there for him. Yeah, oh. Again, that's over what? Is that a five-point run so far by yeah. Dallas Pickleball Club? Yeah, six. One more. There's got to be a timeout. Oh, Chuck Taylor almost got caught. I think they need to settle down, start playing some disciplined pickleball. Burroughs had a stretch of four or five just amazing plays, beautiful shots, uh, and he took that momentum into shots that didn't need it, that just needed to be played, moved around, lived to fight another day. And, uh, you know, hopefully you saw that there at home, but mm. Burroughs just waved to his bench saying, we're good, we don't need a timeout. We talked oh. about your teammates saving you from yourself. Yeah. This is one of those moments where they've got to call timeout for their squad. Yeah, all the momentum is with, was with Dallas Pickleball Club. Still is, I think. Uh, but that is a point for AZ Drive. Easy to forget that. They are 17-15 now. Great block by Fudge to be there. Yeah, she's really getting some good reads on Wes Burrows, understanding when he's about to swoop in, and he's going to the same kind of locations time and again. So one point the margin. Oh, Talk about communication there. Burroughs bails himself out of trouble, but it was not pretty. Yeah, it ends in a smile, but very closely <laughs> could have ended the other way. It could have been a frown. Yeah. Come on. All right, 18-16. Great defense by Ansbury. Overhead by Fudge. Another overhead by Taylor, and no one's home. Yeah, they were both separating, anticipating a wider overhead. And we could have got a Sherman tank through the middle there. Dallas Pickleball Club has a chance to steal this game. Yeah, it certainly, if they do, it would certainly be clutching victory from the jaws of defeat. Great drive by Taylor. Now, let's see if Burroughs can keep his cool. Well, he didn't need to. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I think he just threw off Fudge a little bit by taking that ball mm. when it was in the same area as Ansbury. Mm. Oh, great reset by Burroughs. And then he charged the kitchen line, applying just enough pressure to Chuck Taylor. And that has given them game and match point. Let's see if they can squeak this one out. Oh, this is looking good. It's a great drop by Ansbury to set it up, and Burroughs cleans it up with a 60, 70% drive. He had so many ups and downs in that game. He was a human roller coaster ride, but uh, I think the stability that Sarah Ansbury added to the team helped really kind of weather the storm there because that was a fantastic comeback 
from the Dallas Pickleball Club. But it is the AZ Drive taking this match, marching forward, improving their chances to move on from the group stages. Brandon, this is it for you and me, bud, until tomorrow at least. Wow, yeah, um, they don't get the pleasure of hearing us the rest of the day, but tomorrow <laughs> we will be back for some more pickleball, and MLP has been killing it today. What a great first day. Yeah, wonderful facility, fantastic play. Tomorrow morning, uh, Dominic Catalano and Chad Ed Edwards, I believe, will be kicking off proceedings at 8 a.m. Myself and the lovely Brandon Insikpong will pick it up at 12. We hoped to uh, to hear, well, we don't hear from you, but you know, it's nice when we hear from you afterwards, when, when you send nice text messages and nice emails, as opposed to, well, you pronounced this one wrong. <laughs> I can't get everything right, no one can. Even the players sometimes don't, so. We love you, and we'll be back tomorrow, guys. That's it from me, Morgan Evans, alongside Brandon Insekpong. Take care, and, uh, well, you can always head over to Championship Court. That's uh, the Talking Stick Resort Championship Court. Uh, I think they've still got some action going on there, so check it out, and we will talk to you tomorrow. See you soon.